clinging to her husband and burying her face in his chest. Toddy Anna froze on the platform. Derek looked around nervously, trying to avoid eye contact with his mother, who stood nearby, disapprovingly eyeing the bride. Toddy Anna could feel Miranda's gaze on her, but she couldn't do anything about it. The thought of Derek leaving for a whole month while she stayed alone with his mother in the house made her feel sick. She even felt nauseous. Perhaps her nausea was related to something else, but she didn't want to tell her husband prematurely. She needed to be absolutely sure first. Derek was leaving on a business trip. He worked as a mechanical systems technician and often traveled for work. Usually, it was just for a day or two, but this time, he had to go to another city for a whole month. Toddy Anna could barely hold back her tears because she didn't want to be alone for that long. Living with Miranda was peaceful, except for the fact that pleasing her was nearly impossible. She would nitpick and criticize Toddy Anna, whether it was about not washing the dishes properly, not mopping the floor well, or Derek not ironing his shirt correctly. In the mornings, her mother-in-law would casually enter their room, tapping her fingers on the door frame as she entered. Why bother knocking if you're just going to come in immediately? Toddy Anna blushed pulling the blanket up to her chin. Mir Anna would silently approach the window sill and water her beloved flowers. She loved her plants. After tending to them, she would sigh heavily and then bend down to pick up Derek's socks, which he had carelessly left by the couch. Derek, your breakfast is getting cold. She would kindly remind him before leaving the room. Toddy Anna would hurry to wash up and set the table. In the beginning, she would wake up early and make scrambled eggs, omelets, or porridge herself. Mir Anna would watch with curiosity, wrinkling her nose in disgust at the sight of gray oatmeal with butter. Porridge. Is that even food for a man? She would say, sighing and placing baked potatoes with mushrooms and meat on the table. Breakfast is the most important meal, Mir Anna would admonish, passing by Tati Anna as if she were invisible. Derek seemed oblivious to the attacks on his young wife, and he would eat his mother's food with relish. Two mistresses in the kitchen don't mix, Mir Anna declared as she sat next to her son, propping her chin with a bony fist and looking at him with affection, as though he were still a little boy. Toddy Anna felt like an outsider in her own home. While Derek would look at her apologetically, he didn't contradict his mother. Derek. How about we rent a separate room? Toddy Anna suggested one day, holding a towel in her hand. Why? Her husband asked, puzzled. I think it would be more convenient for us, Toddy Anna replied. What's sunk comfortable for you here? Live and be happy. I won't give our money to strangers. Derek shook his head. The mother somehow found out about their conversation, waited for Derek to leave for two days, and then confronted Toddy Anna. What kind of fantasy do you have? Why should my son abandon me and go away? Did I waste my entire life raising him? When you have your own children, then you can make decisions about them. But I raised Derek on my own without a husband, and now I have the right to his care and attention. Derek's father had been a driver and had died when Derek was three years old. Derek hardly remembered him. Miranda never remarried or dated anyone else. Toddy Anna met Derek at a dance club while she was in her second year of college. She was on her way to becoming an agronomist, excelling in her studies. But when she met Derek, her life took a different turn. Dancing, dating, kisses, evening walks by the river smoothly transitioned into late-night gatherings with love songs, Derek's warm and insistent hands, and his dry, wind-chapped lips. It all made her head spin and lured her into adult life. Still, Toddy Anna never allowed anything more. When he got upset, lit a cigarette, or turned away to satisfy, she would adjust her dress collar and whisper, blushing, Don't be upset, Derek, I can't do that. And with a blush, she would lower her head, biting her lips swollen from kisses. Can I? Derek would bang his fist on the bench. Toddy Anna would flinch and feel guilty. But she wouldn't yield to Derek's persistent advances, enduring his dissatisfaction, knowing what it could lead to, although she loved him deeply. Since childhood, 
She had dreamed of someone like him, tall, with light hair, gray, slightly mocking eyes, and a dimple on his chin. He looked so much like his father, Mirana would proudly say, admiring her son. She considered Tatiana an attractive, fiery red hair, meticulously shaped eyebrows, mermaid-like green eyes, and freckles on her nose. She would discuss Adi Anna with her neighbors and call her a witch. Derek would have been happy if Dadi Anna didn't escape from his embrace by the river. But she was unyielding. Her lips trembled, tears welled up in her eyes, and she looked at him reproachfully, sobbing. You've exhausted me, he exclaimed once. Tomorrow, I'll introduce you to my mother, and we'll make an announcement. Tati Anna couldn't believe her ears, but the next day, Derek did indeed meet her after her classes and took her home. When Mir Anna found out who her son was dating, she raised her right eyebrow in surprise and examined Tati Anna from head to toe. What did Derek see in her? She's small, red hair, still freckled, blushes and pales, a gray mouse next to her handsome son, but she's marked for marriage. They celebrated the wedding at home. On the groom's side, it was attended by his mother's friends and his son's friends, while on the bride's side, only a couple of her college friends were present. Tati Anna wanted to invite her entire class, but Mir Anna was against it. Maybe you'd like to order a restaurant as well. Tati Anna lowered her gaze, blushed, but held back her tears. It seemed like the whole wedding was on Derek's dime. Her parents couldn't help her in any way. Who could help them? They remained in a small, dusty town from which Adi Anna had escaped to get an education and live independently. She disliked mentioning her parents, and if the conversation came up, she tried to change the topic as quickly as possible. Her parents drank heavily. Initially, it was only her father who drank, and her mother would fight with him and pour his vodka into the flowers on the windowsill. Her father would start scandals threatening to harm anyone who crossed his path. The plant eventually fired him due to his drinking, but her mother continued to work as a janitor at the hospital. She would come home after lunch, her eyes gleaming with joy, because two bottles clanked in her back, beer for her husband and vodka for both of them. Her husband would meet her with a languid and sulky look, but within half an hour, he'd feel better, and the drunken conversations and fights would begin often escalating into brawls. The next morning, her mother would cover the bruise under her eye with trembling hands and reluctantly head to work. There were no other sources of income. Tati Anna counted the days until her final exams. She had long planned to leave, had made arrangements with her friend Sandra, but Sandra had failed her exams and didn't get into college. Tati Anna, on the other hand, had aced everything. She enjoyed her studies until she met Derek. It was he, her newly wed husband, who insisted that she quit college. Well, Derek, Tati Anna almost cried. I only have two more years left. An agronomist is always in demand and they get a decent salary. Am I unable to support my wife? Derek responded. What do you need this education for? A wife should stay at home, waiting for her husband. Do you think I'll cook for myself? Derek didn't mention that his mother had also insisted on Tati Anna quitting college. He heeded his mother's words and issued an ultimatum, either him or college. Tati Anna cried but agreed, thus, she became a captive in her mother-in-law's house. Derek was at work all day, and she was locked up with Miranda. At first, her college friends came to visit, but Miranda quickly drove them away, so they lived for almost a year. Tati Anna resigned herself to becoming a housewife. In the evenings, she welcomed her husband home from work, brought a clean towel to the bathroom, and set the table. The only thing she wasn't allowed to do was cook. Mir Anna believed that Tati Anna didn't know Derek's preferences and would prepare everything tasteless and insufficient. Tati Anna tried to protest, but Mir Anna gave her a stern look and immediately lay down on the bed with a wet towel on her head. Tatiana, my mother is elderly. There's no need to upset her. Derek reproached his wife on the same evening. But Derek, I, listen to her. She won't give you bad advice. You should appreciate it when someone takes care of you. He turned to the wall and fell silent. 
while Tatiana swallowed her tears, remembering how easy and fun it was to live in the dorm with her friends. She was her own boss. No need to hide or tiptoe past her mother-in-law's room. No need to finish the greasy soup with uneven chunks of fat. No need to ask for permission to turn on the TV or take a book from the shelf. One day, she decided to arrange a romantic evening for her husband. Mir Anna had gone to a friend's anniversary, warning that she would return late. Toddy Anna baked an apple pie, put on her favorite blue dress, and took out the set with gold trim from the sideboard. The china was exquisite, translucent like semi-transparent glass. Derek was surprised and even seemed a bit embarrassed, but he sat down at the table and enjoyed a piece of pie after another. Delicious, he said, raising a thumbs up. No worse than my mom's. Toddy Anna was slightly annoyed that Mer Anna's presence was still somehow felt, even when she wasn't there. Why was Derek so attached to his mother? It was always about his mother. But he had married Toddy Anna, and they should live as a couple. During tea, Mir Anna returned. She had a headache and had to leave the banquet. When she saw Verdi set on the table, which Toddy Anna had used without asking, she raised her hands, wrinkled her face sadly, and shaking her head, went to her room. Derek immediately rushed after her. Mirena sat on a chair, a solitary tear rolling down her cheek. Mom, what's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? Derek worried. Toddy Anna went to the doorway, also concerned, and watched her mother-in-law. No, Derek, nothing. Probably just my blood pressure, Mirena replied. Mirena, lie down. Should I call a doctor? Taishi Anna's voice was heard. The elderly woman just smiled. Why do I need a doctor? I'll die soon anyway. I'm no longer the mistress here. You've already taken my china. Well, wait a little longer. Soon everything else will be yours. Tatiana stood frozen by the door. She hadn't realized that taking this china was forbidden, and she had only wanted what was best for Derek, not herself. Mom, why are you saying such things? Derek was angry. Lie down. Where are your pills? Tatiana, bring the first aid kit. He spent the entire evening next to his mother, and Tatiana, like a leper, hid in her room. The next morning, the disgruntled Derek wouldn't speak to her. Mirana, who had recovered, fed him breakfast and saw him off to work. Tatiana remained secluded in the depths of the hallway. Derek didn't even look at her. After a few minutes, her mother-in-law appeared from the kitchen, holding half of the apple pie. I had a piece of it way too much sugar. No one's going to eat it, so I'll throw it away. Besides, it's already dried up. Mir and a complaint. The entire pie ended up in the trash. Oh, by the way, my late husband gave me this china. It's very dear to me. Toddy Anna listened carefully, but couldn't understand what her mother-in-law held dear the china or her his bed. Probably both. On one of the cups, I found a crack. Mir Anna continued to grumble. If you're going to use something that doesn't belong to you, please be careful. I haven't bought a single cup or spoon for this house. I don't want to see my things broken. Toddy Anna shook her head in frustration. Her cheeks burned with anger and tears welled up in her eyes, but she didn't want to cry in front of her mother-in-law. That's why you should appreciate what's been earned by others. So they live. Sometimes, Tatiana, listening to the sounds from the kitchen where Mirana was in charge, sadly thought she had made a mistake by agreeing to drop out of college, no profession, no prospects. But when the evening came and Derek returned from work, her heart would skip with joy. She would rush to him, help him take off his jacket, and offer a fresh towel. Derek would awkwardly push her hands away, but the look in his eyes showed his contentment. One day, Derek came home with flowers, just simple chrysanthemums, but they looked like a luxurious bouquet to Tatiana. She raised her eyes to him, full of love and tenderness, which left Derek stunned. He lowered his lashes, made a coarse joke, but Tatiana didn't notice. She put the flowers in a vase on the window sill and would approach them throughout the evening, burying her nose in the snowy white petals and touching them with delicate fingers. Such moments assured Tatiana that Derek loved her deeply. 
He rarely talked about it. Well, that's just how he was a man of few words who didn't read books about love. Mir Hina didn't allow Adi Annie into the kitchen, but she dumped all the other household chores on her. She was obsessive about cleanliness to the point of absurdity, so the windows were cleaned every 10 days or after each rain. Floors were mopped daily, dust was wiped every day, and mountains of laundry and dishes became Tatiana's routine. However, no matter what Tatiana did, she couldn't please me or Anna. Sometimes her mother-in-law would dramatically grab a bucket and a claw of herself and, grumbling and groaning, start tree cleaning the impeccably clean floor after Tatiana. You can tell right away that your mother never taught you anything. She would complain. You've just spread dirt around in the corners and didn't touch the baseboards. We have to choke on the dust in here. Tatiana hand washed the laundry, and her delicate skin quickly turned reddish and dry. Derek left her with almost no personal spending money. He handed everything over to his mother, and Toddy Anna didn't dare to ask for anything. The washing machine was rarely used, only when there was enough bedding to justify it. And what help did it offer, really? Toddy Anna still had to rinse everything by hand, filling a large bathtub with water, then hanging the laundry on the balcony by herself, followed by the inevitable task of ironing. Mir Inna personally inspected every stack of clothes. Heaven forbid she finds a wrinkle or fold that would result in her plugging in the iron again. Tatiana, can you do anything right? She shook her head, looking at Tatiana with a mixture of pity and disdain. By the end of the day, Tatiana was so exhausted that all she dreamed of was lying down. Only Derek's return from work and their occasional evening walks brought her joy. When she saw her husband, her exhaustion disappeared, and her legs and arms felt light. Derek was her refuge, her breath of fresh air, and now he was leaving for an entire month. And she might be pregnant. She hadn't told anyone yet. She decided to see a doctor first, and then share the news with Derek when he returned. He had been talking about having a son for a long time. Tatiana felt a bit hurt. What if it's a daughter? But she reassured herself, he'll love her too. How could he not? The train had departed, taking Tatiana's happiness with it, and she stood on the platform, staring at the tear-blurred tracks. The intert whining, glistening rails stretched out, carrying passengers away and leaving behind somber farewells. Mir Anna touched Tatiana's shoulder. Let's go, everyone has seen your little show, she said. Tatiana followed her feeling an invisible thread unwind from her heart. It twanged, crackled, and stretched out behind Derek, as if unraveling a knitted scar. Derek took away a piece of her soul. It ate, it burned, and it ate. Only the thought of the baby warmed her. Toddy Anna smiled and gently touched her belly, which housed the tiniest grain. She wondered what he would be like. Small, like a little seed. How she and Derek would love their child. Tatiana felt less lonely. She wanted to share her joy with someone. So she decided to write to Justin, her old school friend. Their classmates had teased them about their friendship, thinking it was more than that. But they never paid it any attention. They truly were friends, helping each other with schoolwork. Tatiana wrote essays for Justin, and he translated things from German for her. He even brought sandwiches for both of them. He knew about Tatiana's life, but they never discussed it. Instead, he tried to create moments where she could forget about her cold, dirty shack, her drunken parents. Justin's parents liked Tatiana. Catherine, his mother, always set a place for her at the table, and his father, Patrick, engaged her in literary discussions, treating her as an adult. Their home was always warm and welcoming. After high school, Justin joined the Navy, but Toddy Anna continued writing to him. He would write back, sharing stories about his Navy service. After returning, he lived and worked in the same city Toddy Anna had left. Their correspondence had nothing inappropriate. But just to be safe after getting married, Toddy Anna had asked him to write less frequently. Is your husband the jealous type? Justin had joked between the lines. But Toddy Anna was not afraid of Derek. She was afraid of Mir Enda. 
If Mirana saw letters from another man, it would surely lead to a scandal. Justin had recently informed Tati Anna that he had met a nice girl, and she was genuinely happy for him. It so happened that this young man had been her best childhood friend, and Tati Anna could confide in him about many of her feelings. She knew he would listen without judgment and always offer sensible advice, which is why she wanted to share this important news with him. She felt she didn't matter to her mother or her father, but only Justin could genuinely be happy for her. Of course, it looked strange from the outside, but Tati Anna had to let go of many things, her education, her career, her classmates, but she couldn't bring herself to sever the ties with her childhood friend. It was unseemly, unbecoming, and they had been friends for almost 10 years. She felt her mood improve. Nothing, Tati Anna thought. Time will pass quickly, and I won't even notice. The next morning, she stopped by the post office. Justin's letter had been waiting for her for several days, and it held pleasant news he would be passing through their city in a few days, staying at a hotel for two nights before continuing his journey. Tatiana was thrilled. She would have time to chat, and Justin could also fill her in on their other classmates. She was completely out of the loop since her departure. She read the letter at the post office and paid no attention to the woman with a flushed face struggling to cram a large box into a wheel back. That evening, Mir and I ran into her old friend Jayasi. Derek left. Looks like he's already writing to you, she said after the initial greetings. Mir and I raised her eyebrows in surprise. Writing. When would he have time? He just left. I don't know, Jayasi said, fanning herself with a handkerchief. I came for a package and saw your Tatiana. She got a letter and was positively glowing. She stood there, smiling, and dancing in place. I thought it was Derek who wrote it. She peered closely at Marana's face and asked slyly, If it's not Derek, then who is it? Oh, that's just her friend. Mir Anna casually waved her hand. She needed to divert Jacy's attention, lull her suspicions or she would tell everyone that her future daughter-in-law was carrying on a secret correspondence. Mir Anna wanted to confront Tati Anna as soon as she arrived, press her against the wall, and ask her about the nature of these letters. She would watch her eyes dart around nervously. She knew Tati Anna had clung to Derek because of the apartment, and he was blissfully unaware. Mir Anna had no doubt that she would eventually get rid of the unloved future daughter-in-law. She just needed to gather enough reasons for Derek to finally see the light. She held back her impatience when she sought Adi Anna to avoid asking what she had been doing at the post office. She realized that rushing would only make things worse. Suspicion crossed her mind. Tati Anna is beaming as if she's in love. Unable to hold back, she asked, Why are you acting so strange? Nothing. Tati Anna lowered her eyes. Nothing. Mir Anna fought with unfriendliness. How shameless she is. In the mornings, the bride was always in a hurry, bustling around, but one couldn't follow her on the street like a spy. She'd be too ashamed if anyone caught her, and people would laugh. However, in her room, she turned everything upside down, rummaging through all the closets, flipping through notebooks and books, but found nothing. Finally, Derek returned. As soon as Tatiana saw them, she rushed towards him, but her mother-in-law didn't allow her to come close. She started kissing him and grabbed his shirt. Derek could barely detach her from himself, and he hugged Tatiana, and she heard his heart beating heavily and rapidly. I missed you, he whispered in her ear, and his gray eyes seemed to darken. Tatiana froze happily. Then, later in the night, when Derek had a bit of rest, she quietly shared her big news. Really? Derek sat up. Yes, Derek. Really? Tatiana said softly and giggled. He still shook his head in disbelief and then jumped off the couch. This is amazing, Tatiana. It's going to be a son, he announced into the darkness. A son, for sure. Mir Anna, upon hearing such news, didn't react with joy at all. She looked at Taishi in a slender figure and noticed that she had shrunk and placed her hands on her still flat belly. Mom, don't burden Tatiana anymore. She doesn't need to mop the floors or do the laundry, Derek declared firmly. 
Mir Anna raised her head as if to respond. But upon catching her son's gaze, she changed her mind and just huffed before turning away to the stove. Tati Anna glanced at her stiffened back. Derek, why do you do this? I feel good. I can help, Tati Anna said. Don't do me any favors, Mir Anna muttered without turning around. I can handle it on my own. Otherwise, my son will blame me. She choked back a sob. Derek blushed and left, while Tati Anna began washing the dishes she had cleaned in the morning. A heavy silence hung in the kitchen. All night, Mir Anna pondered how to get out of this situation. On one hand, she understood that children would be born sooner or later, but on the other, she hoped that Tati Anna would turn out to be barren. Mir Anna tossed and turned in bed, rolling from side to side, contemplating what to do next. By the early morning, she had come up with a plan. It was a day off, and Derek and Tatiana were still in bed, trying not to make any noise. Mir Anna tucked a decent stack of money into her purse, some candies that her neighbor had given her, and quietly closed the door behind her. She had to take a journey with two transfers, almost out of town, to a private sector where her acquaintance, the fortune teller Stefania, lived. In her youth, Mir Anna met Stefania when she helped her bring Kevin, Derek's father, back to the family. Derek was just a year and a half old when Kevin had an affair with a factory accountant. He had even started packing his suitcase to move in with that woman for good. Mir Anna rushed to confront her and bushed her outside the office, and they almost got into a physical fight. But Kevin didn't appreciate it. Instead, he got furious, slammed his fist on the table, picked up his suitcase, and left, slamming the door behind him. That's when kind people suggested that she turn to Stefania. She cast a spell, tied Kevin's shirt in knots around Miranda's waist, threw the unlocked lock, made her step over the threshold, and locked it with a key. She ordered her to throw the key into the river when the moon was in the sky. A month later, Kevin came back. He was exhausted, and his gaze was distant as if he had been thinking about something all the time. But it didn't matter. The main thing was that her son wouldn't be without a father, and that blonde woman had left town entirely. Mir Anna thought that the worst was behind her, and they would live well, raise Derek together, and in six months, Kevin passed away. They said he fell asleep at the wheel and drove off a bridge, along with his truck. The most astonishing part was that he fell at the exact spot where Mir Anna had thrown the key into the water. For a long time, she was afraid to walk on that bridge. She kept imagining Kevin looking at her from the murky depths below. Stefania, give me some herbs. I'll slip them into Hurdy, Mir Anna said, carefully pushing a rolled bundle of money toward the old, gray-haired woman, wrapped in a black scarf. You don't need to do anything to the baby, just give me the herbs. The old woman glanced at the visitor slyly. Since the time when Mir Anna had come here about Kevin, Stefania hadn't changed one bit. She still looked like an ancient crone with a face resembling a shriveled baked apple, just as she did now. Only her hands were trembling, but something in her eyes still gleamed. Something that sent a cold shiver down Mir Anna's spine and made her want to run away headlong. No, Stefania creaked finally. It's a sin to ruin an innocent soul. I can divine and charm, so your son's heart will freeze, but I won't kill her. Mir Anna was about to agree even to such a solution, but then Kevin suddenly materialized before her, as if out of thin air. He stood in the green murkiness and glared at her as if he were displeased about something. Mir Anna's eyes bulged, and she hiccuped, and her memory suddenly brought back the moment when she stood on the bridge throwing the key into the water, and a year and a half later, she was mourning her husband. What if the same thing happens to Derek? Oh no, I won't bring this witch down on my son. I can handle it myself. The vision of her deceased has been disappeared as unexpectedly as it had appeared. She stumbled upon Stefania's piercing gaze. Her hand involuntarily dropped onto her lap, and her legs grew weak and unsteady. Go away, the witch muttered. I won't deal with you. Take the money. Mirana slowly got up, silently collected the bills, and left. She felt relieved once she was at the bus stop, as if she hadn't even noticed how she got there. 
Her head was throbbing, and she held a purse from which a box of chocolates was sticking out. Mirana looked around hesitantly. Was she really at Stefania's? It felt like it was all a hallucination. No, she had been there. The money was still clutched in her sweaty palm. She rubbed her forehead with her fingers and winced. I'll walk. Maybe the headache will go away, she said to herself. Mir Anna walked briskly with her skinny, sinewy legs, continuing to think about her situation. Jessica, her friend's daughter, had been on her mind for a while. She was smart, beautiful, and had graduated from college, and now she was working at an instructional bureau. She would be a great match for Derek. A good family, Derek knew it. But he was in love with Toddy Anna, and she was pregnant. Her irritation with her son was mounting. Tears welled up in Marena's eyes due to the injustice, and she quickly wiped them away with her fist. It was impossible to accept that besides the detested fiancé, there would now be diapers and a baby's nocturnal cries in her home. They had lived so well with her son, and Toddy Anna had ruined everything. Derek still had to go on business trips for a day or two, and he couldn't refuse because he really wanted to get promoted to head of the department. What? He would say during dinner. I need to earn money for our son. He deserves the best. Need a bicycle. We need it. A moped. We need it. And a car when he's 18. Tatiana laughed, rocking her round belly. What moped? What car? He's still a little boy. I won't raise a mama's boy. A guy needs technical skills. Derek replied. Start with buying a toy car, Derek. And what's with all this talk about a son, son? What if it's a girl, a daughter? Derek looked at her with cheerful amazement, as if his wife had said the most absurd thing. No, it's going to be a son, and we'll name him James. He pulled Tatiana closer to him and pressed against her taut belly, starting to speak as if addressing the baby inside. James, how are you in there? We'll be playing soccer soon. Tatiana smiled happily. Toddy Ann was due to give birth in the winter, in December, and for now. She was savoring her condition and dwelling in her own world, as every expecting woman does. Over these months, Derek had become gentler and more affectionate, even though he tried to hide his feelings behind a facade of roughness. Mere Anna remained mostly silent, and the sight of Tashi Anna's belly didn't bring her joy or warmth. She felt nothing for her yet-to-be-born grandchild. Often, Mirana would lock herself in her room and cry out of helplessness. She wondered if fate would take pity on her suffering and help her get rid of this girl with her offspring. She was sure that Derek would forget Toddy Anna the very next day after her disappearance. In November, the first snow fell. Toddy Anna stood by the window, spellbound, gazing at the tree branches. She caressed her belly, listening to the baby's movements. For some reason, she even thought that she was carrying a baby boy, as he was too restless, moving day and night. Sometimes he would kick so hard in her belly that a tiny heel and even toes could be seen through the stretched, drum-like skin. Toddy Anna marveled and called her has bend over. Derek was afraid to touch it. It was so amazing to think that a whole person was inside. Toddy Anna moved cautiously on the streets. The sidewalks and yard pathways sparkled with frost and frostbite. Even Mir Anna grumbled that her future daughter-in-law was determined to fall and harm herself and the baby. However, Toddy Anna continued to walk a lot, breathing the chilly, crisp air scented with the fragrant leaves, catching fluffy snowflakes on her eyelashes, imagining how she would build person's first snowman next year. She wasn't afraid of childbirth. In fact, she eagerly awaited the days when she would finally hold her baby in her arms. The only thing she didn't want was to be in the hospital for Christmas. She wished to give birth before the holidays, celebrating Christmas at home. Just the two of them. Well, not just the two of them, of course, but the four of them, with her mother-in-law. Toddy Anna remembered how Justin had visited in the spring, and it warmed her heart. They had talked a lot. She asked about his girlfriend, and he not only told her about her, but also about his classmates, what they were doing, where they were. Some girls had gotten married, and some had even had children. Name him Kelly, 
Justin had seriously advised. Tatiana laughed and shook her head. I'll consult with my husband. Mid-December arrived. Snow had fallen in fluffy drifts, and the streets were cleared by the plows every morning, generously sprinkled with sand. Children were having a great time, sledging down hills on cardboard sheets, building lopsided snowmen, constructing forts, and engaging in snowball fights. Everyone was looking forward to the most magical night, eagerly anticipating the appearance of gifts under the Christmas tree, candies, books, skates, the air was filled with the anticipation of the holiday. No, you won't make it to Christmas. An elderly doctor shook her head in the consultation room. So, rejoice. You'll celebrate it at home with your husband and your daughter. Tatiana looked surprised. How could the doctor know? What about her son? Derek had already convinced everyone that James would be born, even buying a blue stroller. She jokingly told him to get a green one just in case, if they ever have a girl. The doctor was probably just making fun. The doctor placed a stethoscope on Tatiana's belly, listened attentively, and weighed her. Take all your documents with you, just in case, even if you're just going to the store. Got it, she said. Tatiana nodded and clutched her papers with test results, examinations, and recommendations. Unexpectedly, Derek was sent on another business trip. No matter how much he explained that his wife was about to give birth, his superiors refused to listen. Oh, Derek, Tatiana said in fear. What about me? What about you? Your mother will take you to the maternity war, and I'll be back in time for your discharge. I'm not going to the delivery room with you. He replied and chuckled at his own joke. He left, and Tatiana began to count the days until his return hoping she wouldn't have to go to the maternity ward with her mother-in-law. But it didn't work out. She went to bed one evening, but she couldn't fall asleep for a long time. Everything was uncomfortable. Her belly was big, heavy, and got in the way. She got up to drink some water, looked out the window, and watched the snowflakes fall, making it seem like morning instead of night. At three o'clock in the morning, her stomach suddenly felt like it had been cut with a knife. Tatiana gasped, unable to inhale or exhale. Another contraction followed, and another. What was this? The doctor had said it would gradually start hurting, but she had no strength to breathe through this pain. Mir Anna heard her daughter-in-law's moans through the wall, called an ambulance, handed her a bag with documents, and assured her out. The doctors knew how to handle childbirth, and she went to bed. In the morning, she called the hospital's information line. But they said that Toddy Anna hadn't given birth yet and told her to wait. Only in the evening, after enduring pain and suffering, Toddy Anna heard the cry of her baby. Well, mommy, take a look at your newborn, the midwife said, showing Toddy Anna something pink and crying. Through her tears, she couldn't make out anything. She just wanted to grab the squeaky bundle, hold it close, and never part again. A girl is born, the midwife hinted handing the baby to the nurse. Toddy Anna thought she must have misheard. A daughter. She whispered through her bitten, swollen lips. Yes, a daughter. And what a beauty she is. Red hair, just like her mother. And her eyes are green, the midwife said. Suddenly, she turned and gazed intently at Tashi Anna's pale face. Aren't you happy? Did your husband want a son? Toddy Anna remained silent. Oh, these men are so foolish. A daughter for her father is such a joy. And don't cry. In a year, you'll have a boy, the midwife reassured her. They swaddled the baby, and the nurse skillfully carried her away. Toddy Anna raised herself on her elbows, craned her neck, and stared anxiously at the door. Lie still, the midwife scolded. Your baby has been taken to the children's ward. When it's time to feed, they'll bring her back to you. Toddy Anna obediently settled onto the pillow, her heart filled with happiness and joy. But at the same time, a sense of worry began to grow within her. How would Derek react to the fact that they had a daughter? Her thoughts must have been reflected on her face because the nanny, who brought her a lukewarm porridge and hot sweet tea, shook her head disapprovingly. Be happy that you gave birth to a healthy baby. Whether it's a son or a daughter doesn't matter. Just yesterday, 
A woman here gave birth, and her child is disabled, sick, with defects. Her husband said he wouldn't take them home. She's been crying for two days. So be grateful, the nanny said. Hearing such terrible news, Tatiana burst into tears. How could it be that such little ones were already suffering? And what would happen to that poor woman now? All she cared about was her daughter's well-being, and she hoped that Derek would come around once he saw the baby. She would have a son for him soon, just as soon as their daughter grew a little older. Thinking about the baby girl, Tatiana smiled. She realized that she and her husband hadn't even discussed names for girls. For some reason, Justin's words came to mind. Name her Kelly. Kelly. It sounded nice. Well, she still needed to ask Derek. And whatever he said would be fine. Just as long as he didn't want to name her after his mother. Vaguely, Toddy Anna felt a sense of guilt towards her husband. As if she hadn't fulfilled his expectations, let him down, or shattered his dreams. Nonsense, she shook her head. We have a beautiful and smart daughter. What more do we need? As soon as Mir Anna heard the news that her granddaughter was born, she immediately sat by the phone. I told you, she said. There's no use for that girl. Derek kept saying he'd have a son. Look at what happened. Did you expect anything else from such a girl? Is this what they give birth to sons like? Girls bring nothing but trouble. Where is she going and why? A son would always help his parents. What a disaster, a disaster. Maybe it's for the best. Mirana brightened up. Derek will be upset and angry. The important thing is to support him and make him think that Toddy Anna is to blame for everything. We have to turn him against her. For now. She had to put together a package to send to the hospital, so no one would accuse her of not visiting her daughter-in-law. Mirana sighed and began to figure out what to send and how to pack everything neatly to avoid spills and breakage. She decided to wrap everything in a large terry towel she remembered was in Derek's room, on the top shelf in the closet with the bed linen. That's where she found the letter by chance. She placed a stool under the shelf and, climbing onto it, reached her hand under the stack of blankets and sheets underneath the blue, large towel lay several envelopes, and many of them scattered around the room. Miranda's heart leaped with joy. She jumped up, forgetting everything and picked up two letters immediately, scrutinizing the addresses and names. There you have it. She's writing love letters to her lover while her husband is still alive. Mir and impatiently pulled out one of the sheets. The lines blurred before her eyes, making it impossible to read. She screed around the apartment in search of her glasses, and to her frustration, they seemed to have vanished into thin air. Finally, she remembered leaving them near the television. With trembling hands, she put them on and peered intently at the neat, fine handwriting. Dear Tatiana, I often think of you. Don't be sad. Isn't your husband upsetting you? If anything happens, you can rely on me. Aha! Miranda exclaimed. Her eyes sparkled with triumph. Clutching the letters to her chest, she dropped to her knees and raised her face to the ceiling, muttering made-up prayers and words of gratitude. It was as if the forces of justice had led her to the closet and pointed to the spot where the evidence of infidelity was hidden. She hadn't thought to look here in the spring. She had searched in the writing desk, in the nightstand, but hadn't thought to look here. Too bad Derek wasn't home now. He would surely believe that she had been unfaithful to him. And with a child who wasn't even his, Toddy Anna had her fun while he was away on business trips. Miranda's curiosity got the better of her, and she pulled out all the sheets at once, reading them aloud with her lips moving. In one of the letters, the unknown Justin was openly declaring his love for Tatiana. Though, at the end, it was added that it was just as a friend, but it was probably just to throw someone off. After reading everything she found several times, Mir in a smirk and carefully stacked all the sheets together, placing the envelopes on top. Now she just had to wait for her son. She didn't take the package to the maternity ward. Toddy Anna couldn't take her eyes off her tiny daughter. She was charmed by the little tuft of red hair on her head, her tiny fingers on her hands and feet. Her eyes, 
her small, toothless mouth as she eagerly nursed. However, Taishiina's milk supply was almost non-existent. She was close to tears, feeling like an inadequate mother, incapable of feeding her own child. The nurses reassured her, saying she had to wait, and in the meantime, they supplemented the baby's feeding with formula. They brought the infants in a large cart for each feeding, where they lay side by side, swaddled tightly. Some of them cried, but Taishi Inna's baby was always quiet. She would take her daughter in her arms, pressing her lips to the delicate cheek and inhaling her familiar scent. She couldn't help but marvel at the miracle of having a little human who was entirely her own, like a tiny replica. How unfortunate that Derek can't see her, Tatiana thought, rocking her daughter. He would forget all about wanting a son. She was eagerly awaiting a package from her mother-in-law. But for some reason, Mir Anna hadn't come. Derek returned from his business trip a day before the discharge. As he walked home, he felt a sense of anxious anticipation, reassuring himself that everything was normal. Of course, Toddy Anna had just given birth. His mother opened the door, and by her expression, Derek immediately knew that something was wrong. What's wrong with Toddy Anna? And the baby? He asked rushing into his room without taking off his coat. His room was empty, and there was only a stack of papers with envelopes on the nightstand. Where is she, Mom? Derek asked, looking at her with concern. Mirana bit her lip. She didn't even greet you. Toddy Anna gave birth to a daughter the day before yesterday. They're supposed to be discharged tomorrow. A daughter? Where's the son? You should know better. Mirana smirked. You can't see beyond the tip of your nose. She let out a heavy sigh and turned away. But out of the corner of her eye, she kept watching how Derek would react to her words. He clumsily shuffled near the door, went back into the hallway, and hung his jacket on the coach rack. A daughter, he muttered to himself. How can this be? I told everyone it would be a son. You shouldn't have been in such a rush. Mir and a suddenly exclaimed. Do I need to consult with you on how to have a son? Derek asked with irony, looking at his mother in surprise. I'm a grown man. I can handle it on my own. Well, you'll handle it. You didn't seek advice. You brought who knows whom into the house. And now you'll have to deal with the shame. What shame? Derek stared at his mother in bewilderment. What was she talking about? It was disappointing that a girl was born. But how was it a disgrace? Perhaps something was wrong with the baby. He rushed back to the coat rack and started putting his jacket back on. He needed to go to the maternity ward, find out if everything was okay, deliver the note, and congratulate Tatiana. His mother must have been overwhelmed with joy for becoming a grandmother and was now talking nonsense. Where are you going? Mirana grabbed his sleeve. I'll make it to the maternity ward before 5 p.m. I want to find out everything about the baby and what time we should come for the discharge tomorrow. Wait, Mir Anna lowered her head. I have to tell you, Derek. Oh, I don't know how or where to start. She clutched her left side of the chest and sat down heavily on a bench against the wall. Derek stared at her in silence, not understanding anything. Finally, his mother stood up, gestured for him to follow her into the room, and then sat on the couch. She reached out, took the letters from the nightstand, and handed them to him. Here, take these. And again, a heavy sigh, as if someone had died. Derek remained silent, but inside, a terrible suspicion was growing. From a distance, he could see the address on the envelope Tashi in his hometown, and in the sender's field, a man's last name. Our Tatiana, Mirana sobbed, turned out to be not the one we thought. Oh, my son. She didn't look at her son. Derek grasped the doorframe, his fingers whitening from the tension. What were these letters? Why hadn't Toddy Anna told him anything? Yes, son, as if she had read his thoughts, his mother continued. Here they are. Quite a few of them. Do you want to read them? I've already read them. It's better not to see. She waved her hand. I haven't slept for the past three nights, crying all the time. I told you she cried when you left in the spring, and I warned you not to rush. But what now? Would a faithful wife do such things? Read about their affections and love, 
It's been going on for a while. He even came to see her when you left on your business trip for a month. They met at a hotel. Camilla told me everything. She works there. I didn't believe it back then, and I didn't want to stir up trouble by telling you. But it turns out, I should have. Pretending to be devastated, Mir Anna kept glancing at her son, trying to gauge his reaction. She fabricated the part about Camilla. Of course, no one told her anything. But would Derek rush to verify it? The main thing was to say as much as possible now, and his temperament wouldn't wait, just like his father's. Derek leaned his back against the door. Was Toddy Anna cheating on him, writing letters, meeting this man? He recalled their parting at the train station in the spring when Toddy Anna was in tears. It seemed like she rushed to that man right after that. What about the child? She had just told him about the pregnancy after he left on his business trip. Mir Anna could tell what was going through her son's mind. She lowered her gaze and almost whispered, Think about it, son. Is the child yours or not? Derek's vision turned white. In anger, he hit the door frame with his fist, leaving a dent in the white paint. Blood appeared from his broken knuckles. Mirena gasped, covered her mouth with her hands, but then quickly composed herself and rushed to her son. Derek, son, stop it. It's a good thing it's all come out. Why should we raise someone else's child? Let her go to that guy of hers. Derek grabbed his hair. He was terrifying to look at. He roared and shook his head, then raised his bloody knuckles and stared at the letters. They lay there mockingly on the couch, taunting him, laughing in his face, baring their teeth, reveling in his shame. Derek took a step closer. Harmless sheets of paper filled with a small handwriting appeared to him as a tangle of venomous snakes. He wanted to reread everything the other man, his wife's lover, had written, but he couldn't even reach out to grab the envelopes. It felt like touching a slimy mold that would cling to his fingers, and he would never be able to wash it off. How would he face his friends now? They must have seen Tatiana with her lover, and now they were discussing it behind his back. This was why his acquaintance had laughed and said it was dangerous to leave his young wife alone during his business trips. How could he have fallen into such a mess? And how could he have been so blind? He didn't listen to his mother, who turned out to be right. Derek was ashamed to look his mother in the eye, and he was ashamed in front of everyone. How could he show his face in public now? In a fit of rage, he lunged toward the couch, grabbed the letters with both hands, and then flung them onto the floor, stomping on them. His face turned purple, and foam formed on his lips. Mirana watched her son with fear, never having seen him like this before. Derek roared again and fell to his knees. He grabbed the crumpled and torn pages, tearing them into small pieces. Soon, the entire floor was covered in scraps of paper. The only sound in the room was the man's labored breathing. After a minute, he got up, shook his hands, and walked to the hallway. Mir Anna hurried after him. Derek, where are you going? But her question went and answered. Only the entrance door slammed shut with a loud crash. Mir Anna sighed, and a joyful smile lit up her face. It seemed that everything had worked out. She crossed herself several times, but it was too early to relax. Toddy Anna might try to complain to him or use their child to manipulate him. Hopefully, Derek would remain firm. She went to the kitchen, grabbed a broom and dustpan, returned to the room, swept the paper scraps into a pile, and then threw them away. For good measure, she also put on her coat and took the trash bin outside. The white paper fragments whirled in the air before landing on potato peels and other harmless leftovers, carrying away their secret and leaving no chance for exoneration. Tatiana, where are your relatives? shouted the nurse, peering into the room for the third time that morning. Your discharge time is almost up. Tatiana shrugged in dismay. She couldn't answer. Has Derek become so upset that she gave birth to a daughter instead of a son, to the point where he won't even talk to her now? What should she do now? She stumbled back to her room and sat on the bed around her. There was hustle and bustle as neighbors paraded one by one to the ground floor, where a smiling nurse handed each day's new father a bundle. 
The only difference between the bundles was the ribbons. Some were pink, and others were blue. Tatiana, what's your decision? Are you ready to be discharged? Tatiana looked up. The impatient nurse was waiting for her response. Yes, Tatiana replied. But no one can pick me up. My husband went on a business trip, and he was called away urgently. There's no one else available, so I'll go home by myself. Tatiana turned beach red, feeling like her on-the-spot lie was visible to everyone. However, the nurse simply nodded and hurried to the pediatric ward to prepare the baby. But how will I get there? Tatiana thought anxiously. It's freezing cold outside, and there's so much snow. She remembered that there was a bus stop near the maternity hospital, and a bus that went in their direction. After half an hour, the nurse returned, cradling the tiny face of the newborn in her arms, wrapped in a thick blanket. Toddy Anna cautiously peered inside. Her daughter was asleep, her long eyelashes forming a semicircle. Suddenly, the baby wrinkled her tiny face and yawned but didn't wake up. Carefully, Toddy Anna descended the stairs, and she wasn't used to carrying a child, so she was afraid of stumbling. Tashi Anna's throat tightened and tears welled up in her eyes. This wasn't how she had imagined this day. Derek should be the one to carry their daughter, and she would stand beside him, proud and happy. But none of that was happening, and it was also inexplicable. The bus took a long time to arrive. Toddy Anna huddled behind the shelter's tin wall, shielding herself from the wind, constantly watching the road. She felt cold, but only thought about keeping her baby from getting sick. It's okay, she tried to reassure herself. It's all right. I'll be there soon, and everything will get sorted out. Oh, Derek will scold me for coming in this cold by myself. Finally, the right bus pulled up. Toddy Anna sat by the window, cradling the large, awkward bundle in her arms. The conductor shook her head disapprovingly. Where are these young mothers going in such cold weather? I feel sorry for the child. Toddy Anna stared out the window, pondering why neither Derek nor her mother-in-law had come to pick her up. She walked cautiously through the courtyard, as if carrying precious crystal, yearning to enter her home, free her tired arms, and have a cup of hot tea, preferably with milk. The bundle was still quiet, but Toddy Anna knew her daughter was due for feeding. She would soon wake up and start making gentle noises. The familiar door was in sight. Toddy Anna breathed out and, pressing her shoulder against the door frame, pressed the doorbell. A melodious chime echoed from inside. After a minute, footsteps approached, and the door swung open. Standing in the doorway was Derek, his gaze cloudy, his hair disheveled, and a burnt-out cigarette clinging to his lower lip. Seeing Toddy Anna, he raised his eyebrows in surprise, then grinned. You've shown up. His breath smelled strongly of alcohol and Tatiana recoiled in horror, memories of her drunken father and his constant complaints and shouting flooding back. Derek, let me in. I'm really tired, Tatiana whispered, her strength failing her, as she tried not to burst into tears. Derek snorted and swung the door wide open, then retreated further into the apartment. Tatiana stepped inside. Miran appeared out from the kitchen and, upon seeing her daughter-in-law with the baby, recoiled as if she had encountered a ghost. A look of disgust briefly flickered across her face. Toddy Anna kicked off her shoes. The bundle on her arm made a fuss as she tried to settle her daughter. Struggling to remove her coat, Toddy Anna wearily headed for the living room. Her mother-in-law followed. She positioned herself by the door, folding her arms across her chest, as if prepared to watch an intriguing performance. Derek, swaying slightly, stood in the center of the room. Toddy and arranged the bundle right on the couch and began to unwrap it. She needed to wash her hands, but she was afraid to leave the baby alone with her husband and mother-in-law. One was clearly inebriated, apparently celebrating the birth of his daughter, and the other watched her as though she were a stranger who had walked in off the street. The baby had already started to cry and Toddy Anna noticed that both Derek and Mir and a grimace simultaneously, as if they had bitten into a lemon. She rushed to turn away from them and began to unbutton her shirt. She couldn't explain why, 
but she felt oddly self-conscious, as though she was under the scrutiny of curious, unfamiliar eyes. The baby eagerly latched onto her breast and quieted down for a moment. Soon, she cried again, clearly indicating that there wasn't enough milk. I need to supplement her feeding, Tatiana thought desperately. We need formula, but where can I get it? She looked at her mother-in-law with a pleading expression, but only received a cold and indifferent gaze in response. Dealing with Derek was futile today. Mirana, could you please go to the store? Tatiana asked, her eyes filled with desperation. I have very little milk, and the baby. No, her mother-in-law interrupted, casting a look at her son, as if seeking his support and approval. Without saying anything more, she turned away and, without looking at her daughter-in-law or her granddaughter again, went into the kitchen. Toddy Anna continued to rock the baby, hoping that she would warm up and fall asleep, but the child remained inconsolable. Her crying only grew louder. For heaven's sake, calm her down already, Derek snapped, slamming his fist on the table. Toddy Anna fell silent in fear, but continued to rock the baby. She couldn't understand what had happened during the five days she was away. Why was there such an outpouring of anger and irritation from the moment she stepped inside? In short, wrap her up again, Derek coldly pointed at the baby, and leave, just go back where you came from. Toddy Anna felt like she must have misunderstood something. Her heart sank, beating deep within her abdomen, causing a persistent and unsettling fear. Derek, what are you saying? She murmured, her lips almost lifeless. This is, this is your daughter. My daughter, you say. Derek replied with a malevolent smirk. Get out of here. He angrily pushed a chair aside with a crash and clumsily walked past his wife. Toddy Anna recoiled as his hatred crashed down on her, suffocating her like an avalanche. The baby had grown tired of crying and fallen asleep, but Toddy Anna, motionless, sat on the couch staring off into space. She was afraid to leave the room and confront the situation. Maybe it's just because he's drunk. She consoled herself. He'll sleep it off, and tomorrow he'll apologize. He couldn't have meant what he said, right? Where could she even go, especially with such a little one in her arms? Toddy Anna was extremely thirsty. A cup of tea or even just a glass of water was tantalizing, but she lacked the strength to go to the kitchen. No, I need to calm down. Otherwise, the milk will run out, Tatiana thought, glancing at her daughter. The baby slept soundly, her little face looking hurt by the world. Tatiana's heart ached, almost to the point of tears. She had looked forward to her pregnancy and the day when Derek would hold his daughter and they would choose her name, all the while taking walks together with the baby carriage on weekends. But now, all her dreams had crumbled like a fragile sand castle washed away by the tide. The door creaked open with a loud groan, and Mir Anna peered into the room. Toddy Anna looked up at her. Mir Anna remained silent for a moment before speaking. You, Toddy Anna, definitely shouldn't go anywhere right now, she said. But know this, we're giving you three days to leave this house, by the weekend, that is. Please, what's going on? Tatiana said in a hushed voice. Could you at least explain? I don't understand. Tatiana's eyes welled with tears, and a shadow of sympathy crossed Miranda's face. But within seconds, her gaze turned stern once more. It would have been better to shed tears earlier, my dear, when you were writing those letters and meeting your lover while your husband was still alive. But now, well, what's the use? Tatiana stared at her mother-in-law in disbelief. What lover? What was she talking about? She had always been in Miranda's presence. Suddenly, a suspicion lit up in her mind. Just then, Miranda must have found the letters and said something to Derek. She needed to explain herself to him and show him their correspondence. There was nothing suspicious in those letters. She'd obey, apologize for not revealing it earlier, and Derek would understand she didn't want to worry him. It was ridiculous to label Justin as her lover. She didn't want to explain anything to her mother-in-law. The important thing was to persuade Derek. Toddy Anna stood up abruptly. She didn't look at Miranda. Where are those letters? 
I will show them to Derek, and he will see that there's nothing in them like what you've made up. I've made up. Miriam exclaimed in disbelief. I've made it up. Besides the letters, do you think I was the one running to that man in the hotel? Answer me, or are you going to keep pretending to be innocent? He's not just some man, Toddy Anna cried in despair. He's Justin. He's, he's a friend. He helped me when we were kids, almost like a brother to me. He came here for work, and we just talked. He's a classmate. He shared some news. We know all about this news, Mir Anna said through pursed lips. First, a meeting for news, and then, she paused for a moment and concluded. Then you turned out to be pregnant. Tatiana shook her head in disbelief. She seemed to have become numb from what she had just heard. With great effort, she finally parted her lips and whispered, What are you saying? This is Derek's daughter. How can you? Aren't you ashamed? Should I be the one who's ashamed? Mirana wondered, flashing a strange smile before preparing to leave the room. She added, I showed your letters to Derek. He tore them up, so you won't be able to prove anything. The door closed quietly. Toddy Anna slumped onto the couch, overwhelmed by it all. Her head throbbed with pain. It appeared that Mir Anna had orchestrated this deliberately. The satisfaction on her face was evident. The only way to rectify this was to talk to Derek. In the morning, when he was sober, she would tell him everything. He would believe her and understand that he had been misled by his mother. The night felt like an eternity. Toddy Anna listened attentively for her daughter, waking up at even the faintest of her cries. When everyone was asleep, she cautiously made her way to the kitchen to brew some tea. She filled a three-liter pot and brought it into the room. She longed to take a shower. Her skin and hair seemed to carry the scent of the hospital. However, the running water would make noise, potentially waking up her mother-in-law and Derek, leading to another scandal. It was best to wait until morning and try to talk to her husband in private. In the morning, the door creaked softly, and Derek appeared in the room. He approached the closet to get his things. It was probably time for him to leave for work. Derek. Toddy Anna called out to him, let's talk. What my mom told you, it's not true. Those letters, they're from a classmate, a childhood friend. We wrote to each other in a friendly way. You see, I didn't tell you because I was afraid you would be angry. Please forgive me, Derek. I didn't think it would turn out like this. She slid off the couch and approached her husband, trying to gently pat his shoulder. You didn't think, huh? Derek said. He shook his head in disbelief and added, You didn't expect that, while I was away on a business trip. Your friend would father your child. He turned around and stared at her with bloodshot eyes, his face frightening. It felt as though he might strike her any moment. Toddy Anna recoiled in fear. Derek slammed the closet door with all his might and stormed out of the room. The baby woke up and started crying. Derek didn't return home that evening and he was absent the next day as well. Instead, toward evening, Mir Anna visited Tatiana. Tatiana, I hope you remember that you have to leave our apartment tomorrow morning, she told her. Tatiana remained silent, gently rocking her baby. It was challenging to soothe her daughter quickly, probably due to a lack of milk and Tashi Anna's own frazzled nerves. She had grown tired of crying and being humiliated. When the baby finally fell asleep, Toddy Anna began packing her things. She took out the stroller and folded bland cats and clothes for her daughter. For herself, she packed a change of underwear and a warm sweater. Spring was still far off, and taking any more belongings made no sense. Where and how she would live now, Toddy Anna couldn't even imagine. She didn't have the money to rent a room, and there was no place that would accept her with a child. Without money, she couldn't even buy a ticket home where she would find a dirty barracks with greasy beds and drunken parents. Tears welled up in her eyes again. Toddy Anna cried so bitterly that her daughter awoke and began wailing like a distressed little mouse. When Derek returned home sober and sullen, there was no one in the room. He stared blankly from the couch to the partially open closet door, then to the corner where the stroller had stood just a few days ago. Now, the corner was empty, 
just like the shelves inside the closet that held the baby's things. Mom, Derek called out as he stepped into the hallway. Mir Anna hurried out of the kitchen, but when she saw her son, she stopped and casually adjusted her hair. What's up, son? You scared me, she said. Mom, where's Tati Anaman? Where? I mean, where are they? Derek asked incredulously. She left, Derek. Mir Anna replied as if nothing had happened. She left. She left on her own. Derek looked around skeptically. Yes, his mother nodded, pretending innocence. Derek hung his head, overwhelmed with pity. The cold, the snowstorm he imagined Toddy Anna struggling through the blizzard with the baby. The wind cut through her thin jacket, snowflakes piling into the stroller, falling on the baby's face. The wheels got stuck in snowdrifts. This? It doesn't seem right, he muttered to himself. Mir Anna noticed the shadow that crossed her son's face and quickly started talking, brewing distraction. Derek, thank God she left. Forget about her. Let her go to her guy. Without saying anything, Derek turned and walked into the room, firmly closing the door behind him. In the room, he threw himself onto the couch, buried his face in a pillow, and froze. Indeed, Toddy Anna was to blame. Otherwise, she wouldn't have left without trying to explain. She fled like a rat. He pounded his fists against the upholstery. He wished the events of the past few days would be erased from his memory. Tatiana walked along snow-covered streets, pushing the stroller in front of her. The only place where she might try to seek refuge was the dormitory of the technical school. Maybe the dorm manager, Debbie, would take pity on her and provide shelter for a while. The thought of sending a letter to Justin crossed her mind, but the idea of complaining and seeking help was so humiliating that she almost wanted to disappear. The heavy door of the dormitory opened with difficulty. Toddy Anna pushed the stroller into the small foyer of the old stone building with the last of her strength. The baby stirred and let out a faint cry. Toddy Anna removed her hat and rocked the stroller gently. The baby's cries alerted the night watchwoman, who peered out of the small window of her guard booth, where she had a table and a camp bed with an old blanket. What do you want? She asked in a deliberately stern voice. This isn't a clinic. Why did you come here with a baby? Bro, it's me, Tatiana. Do you remember? I used to live in room 17 here, Tatiana said, leaning wearily against the window sill. Please, get Debbie for me. I need to talk to her. Tatiana's head was slightly spinning from exhaustion and nerves, but she tried to keep herself together. If Debbie refused her, she didn't know what she would do next. She was at the end of her rope. The past few days had merged into a long, nightmarish blur. She longed to wake up next to Derek and their daughter, relieved that it had all been a long, exhausting nightmare. Brooke bustled around and went to the staircase. The dorm manager lived on the second floor. A few minutes later, footsteps echoed in the foyer again, and the watchwoman reappeared with the dorm manager, a short, curly-haired woman named Debbie. Debbie looked intently at Toddy Anna and nodded, as if she either greeted her or confirmed her own suspicions. Generally, girls returned to the dormitory not because things were going well, and having a child with them was even more unusual. The baby cried louder in the stroller. Toddy Anna took the baby out of the stroller and held her clothes, her forehead covered in sweat, and deep blue circles under her eyes. She was barely able to stay on her feet. Oh God, Debbie exclaimed, raising her hands. Tatiana, you're going to collapse. How could you, Tatiana? Come with me, you must be freezing. Bro, please put the stroller in that closet over there for now. Debbie briskly climbed the stairs, checking the baby's blanket on the way to see if her nose was cold. In the room, she placed the bundle on the bed, swiftly untied the pink ribbon and enfolded the blanket. The baby grew quiet and only turned her head discontentedly in her woolen cap. Debbie removed the cap, leaving the baby in a flannel bonnet. There, my dear, like this, she said gently. She skillfully slipped her hand under the baby's body. Tatiana, she's all wet. Get some dry diapers and undress yourself. The kettle on the stove is hot. 
Pour yourself some tea quickly. You need to warm up. And your feet. Put on warm socks from over there. Tatiana sat helplessly in a chair, unable to move. The warmth made her feel drowsy. She desperately wanted to sleep and couldn't muster the energy to follow Debbie's instructions. The door manager shook her head and then went to the bag of belongings. These diapers are quite cold, she said with concern, laying them out on the radiator. After a moment's thought, she opened the closet doors and pulled out a colorful clean sheet. Debbie tore the sheet in half with a snap. Ignoring Tatiana, she unwrapped the baby, dried her with a towel, and swaddled her in the makeshift diaper. The baby squinted contentedly and smacked her pink lips. Casting a glance at Toddy Anna, Debbie took the kettle and poured a large mug of tea, generously adding milk and two spoons of sugar. Here, drink. The baby needs to be fed, she said. Toddy Anna took a small sip but felt both hungry and thirsty simultaneously. She began to drink the hot liquid eagerly, and a comforting warmth spread throughout her body. Her fingers and toes tingled. Debbie nodded and pushed a plate toward her, which held two buttered sandwiches. Have a snack for now, and I'll make soup. We'll eat together. Toddy and it devoured both sandwiches without noticing, her stomach gurgling pleasantly. She felt a bit embarrassed that she couldn't take care of herself or her child like this. Then a thought crossed her mind. The baby, my child. She hasn't called her by her name all these days because she couldn't come up with one. And suddenly, a clear name rang out in her mind. Named her Kelly. Justin had been right in suggesting that name. Kelly it would be. Toddy Anna quickly finished her tea and gingerly picked up Kelly. The baby, sensing the scent of her mother's milk, puckered her lips more intensely. Toddy Anna looked at Debbie with embarrassment. Well, what's the matter? Debbie exclaimed in surprise. Sit over there, away from the window so you won't catch a draft. Toddy Anna took her heavier breast in her hand. The baby immediately latched on, puffing her cheeks. Her red hair became sweaty and stuck to her forehead. Debbie, smiling, cleared the table. After five minutes, the baby started to fuss and cry. Toddy Anna was ready to burst into tears with her. She switched the baby from one breast to the other, realizing there wasn't enough milk. The child wasn't getting full. What's wrong with her? Debbie asked with concern. I have too little milk. Toddy Anna whispered almost inaudibly. I need to supplement with formula, like in the maternity hospital. The door manager stopped her fussing at the table and thought for a moment. Then, quickly putting on her coat and scarf and sliding her feet into her boots, she said, sit here, I'll be back soon. Wait. And she disappeared. Toddy Anna, her wet eyelashes fluttering, started rocking Kelly. Thankfully, she didn't have the strength to cry out loud so she continued to squeak like a little mouse. Soon, she fell silent. Toddy Anna listened to the footsteps in the corridor. The familiar girls lived on the third floor, and there were fewer people here on the second floor. She really didn't want anyone to find out about her and come to gossip. Although if Debbie allowed her to stay, everyone would find out anyway. Warmed up in her arms, the baby fell asleep, and Toddy Anna did too. Someone gently shook her shoulder. Tatiana woke up, and it was Debbie. Oh, Tatiana blushed. I think I fell asleep. Here, Tatiana, look, I bought formula and two bottles at the pharmacy. We'll feed your daughter now, Debbie said with a kind smile. She didn't have children of her own and had visited doctors countless times, but a child never came. Her husband left because he wanted an heir badly. However, she held no grudge against him. Well, everyone wants to be happy. She lived with her simple joys, strictly maintained the dormitory, preventing any disorder, and in her spare time, she knitted remarkably beautiful sweaters, scarves, and hats, supplementing her modest salary. In a few minutes, the baby, without opening her eyes, latched onto the yellow rubber nipple. At first, she frowned and even spat out the tasteless rubber, but once she tasted the sweet formula, her cheeks worked vigorously. When the bottle was empty, the nipple fell out of her mouth as she had fallen fast asleep. Toddy Anna gently moved her to the wall, ran her finger through her red hair, 
and trace her rosy cheeks with her fingertip. The room was quiet. I understand you don't have a place to live, Tatiana, Debbie suddenly said. Tatiana hung her head, feeling the need to share her story. But the shame held her back. She had been so happy with Derek, rejoicing in their real family. And then this happened. In any case, stay for now. We'll take you in for a few days. But you understand. I don't have the right. Debbie frowned. There will be an inspection soon. Toddy Anna was thankful for this offer. She smiled gratefully and began to collect the wet diapers to take them for drying. Holding a basin, she looked uncertain. Go on. Don't be afraid. Debbie sighed. I'll keep an eye out. Don't worry. Here, take this towel and have a shower. Toddy Anna returned from the shower feeling refreshed. Debbie had finished making soup. Toddy Anna didn't particularly want to eat, but she didn't want to hurt Debbie's feelings, so she reluctantly picked up the spoon. After having some tea, she leaned back in her chair. Now, lie down. Take a nap while your daughter is still asleep. Debbie nodded towards the bed, where Kelly was tucked away by the wall. Toddy Anna didn't refuse. Her eyes were heavy, and she carefully lay down on the blanket, placing her right hand on her baby. While I set up a bed for you in the next room, Debbie got up. You'll move there in the evening. It will be more comfortable for you. Toddy Anna spent five days at the dormitory. The girls to whom she briefly recounted her misfortunes were in all. Kelly was sleeping soundly. Since she started feeding from the bottle, she would eat and sleep. Toddy Anna sometimes didn't know what to do with herself. She often carried Kelly into Debbie's room where she helped her cook or knit. What? Lucy whispered, annoyed. She's the troublemaker herself, and now she's taken her baby too. Hey, Tatiana, should we go see Derek? Maybe he'll listen to us. Oh, no. Irene shook her head. He didn't believe Tatiana. So why would he believe us? Tatiana sadly gazed past her friends, fiddling with the plastic rattles the girls had bought as gifts. She remembered her husband's angry eyes and his mother's triumphant ones. In the evenings, she listened to the footsteps in the corridor. What if Derek had a change of heart and came for her? He must realize that she could only find shelter here in the dormitory. If he wanted to, he would call her back. But that meant neither she nor her daughter were needed by him. Tears of hurt welled up again. The girls left cheerfully. They had their own concerns, preparing for Christmas attending lectures, discussing outfits, and gentlemen. Tatiana felt utterly dejected. Debbie entered the room, looked at her intently, and immediately understood everything. After much contemplation, Tatiana decided to return to her hometown. She did have room there, albeit an unfurnished one, but at least it was a place to stay. Her parents might reconsider when they saw their granddaughter. She needed to hold out for about seven months, and then she could send Kelly to daycare and find a job. She was frightened by the thought of meeting Justin and having to explain why her marriage had fallen apart. He would start questioning her reasons, and she couldn't discuss them. Justin had a quick temper, and he might rush here to confront Derek, and then her husband and mother-in-law would be entirely convinced of their accusations. The girls helped raise money for her ticket and Toddy Anna promised to send them money as soon as she could settle down. They all saw her off at the train station, hugging her for a long time, crying, and asking her to write to them. If things got too difficult, they encouraged her to ask for help. Finally, the train released a cloud of steam, rumbled, jerked a few times, and slowly began to move. Toddy Anna looked sadly through the snowy window and she could see nothing beyond the old brick buildings. Debbie had given her some buns for the journey and handed her a thermos with sweet tea and lemon. She waved for a long time from the platform. The train carried Tatiana further and further away from her short-lived marriage, Derek, and Mirana. She held hope in her heart that with time, Derek would change his mind, write to her, and eventually invite her back. He had said he loved her, and that meant he had to trust her. Time was the best healer. It would bring clarity. Her hometown welcomed her with snow-covered streets and bright sunshine in the blue sky. The conductor helped her unload the stroller, 
and Toddy Anna, nervous, walked towards her home. Anxiety gnawed at her heart. What if her parents didn't have a place for her? That would mean she had nowhere else to go. Her soul felt heavy. It was tough when there wasn't a single close soul. She thought Derek would replace them all, became attached to him, and he rejected her like an unwanted creature, leaving her alone once more. A faint smile crossed her lips. It was hard not to get used to the fact that she was not alone. Kelly was sleeping soundly under the warmth of a blanket. Now, the two-story house appeared at the edge of the street. Toddy Anna hoped she wouldn't run into anyone she knew. She didn't want to explain herself. Fortunately, there wasn't anyone particularly close by. She struggled to open the door, which was stuck to the frame with frost. She looked sadly at the wooden staircase. She had to carry the stroller upstairs. Tatiana, is that you? A voice came from behind. Tatiana turned and saw her neighbor, Uncle Jesse. Yes, Uncle Jesse. Tatiana smiled awkwardly. Did you come alone or with your husband? Alone, my husband couldn't come. He stayed at home and I'll be staying here for a while. Tatiana blushed and lowered her head. Well, let me help you with the stroller. Uncle Jesse hurried. Is it a boy or a girl? It's a girl, Kelly. Tatiana smiled. That's a beautiful name. How are my parents doing? Tatiana asked cautiously, trying to change the topic. I didn't even warn them about my arrival. Uncle Jesse stopped and looked at her somberly from beneath his bushy eyebrows. Your father has been in the hospital for a month. Then he stopped drinking for a while, but started again. Your mother drinks every day. Tatiana. Why did you bring a child here? He gazed intently at her face. But Toddy Anna looked away and quickly ascended the creaking stairs. Uncle Jesse followed her. The door to the apartment was slightly ajar. Toddy Anna peered inside cautiously. It was dark and quiet in the corridor. Toddy Anna thanked him for his help and, trying not to bump into anything in the semi-darkness, went to her little room. She pushed the door open and winced as the smell of alcohol hit her. In the depths of the bed lay a body covered with a thin blanket. Toddy Anna put her daughter in the stroller and approached the bed. Gray hair with remnants of black hair was sticking out from under the blanket, and Toddy Anna realized that it was her mother who was sleeping here. Mom, she called her softly and shook her shoulder. Mom, it's me, Toddy Anna. The disheveled woman murmured and raised her head from the pillow. It was clear that she didn't know if this was real or a dream. Toddy Anna, she finally croaked hoarsely. Where did you come from? Her mother sat up, dangling her skinny legs in old brown stockings with a hole on her knee. She shook her head, coughed, and then stared at her daughter again. Well, why did you come here? Her mother noticed the stroller in the doorway and widened her eyes in confusion. Did you bring bottles in that thing? She asked. No, mom. No, Tatiana replied. Tatiana looked around helplessly. This is my daughter, Kelly. It just happened. We'll stay here for a while. Her mother didn't react. And Toddy Anna even thought she hadn't heard her. Mom, do you hear me? Yes, I hear. The woman snapped. Where's your husband? Did he leave you? Did you get divorced? No, Mom, we didn't get divorced. Derek and I had an argument. Her mother, not listening to the end, jumped off the bed and, without finding her slippers, was pounding the heels of her bare feet into another room. Along the way, she accidentally nudged the stroller, and Toddy Anna rushed over, making sure Kelly hadn't woken up. Father, father, where are you, at home? No, her voice sounded muffled. The front door slammed, and after a couple of minutes, the raspy voice of her father became audible. Her mother mumbled something monotonously to him. Toddy Anna closed her eyes, wondering how she would survive here. She approached the bed and removed the crumpled and musta bedding. While Kelly was sleeping, she needed to at least clean the floors and dust. Uncle Jesse would install a lock on her door. She had very little money, but perhaps her mother would still help with groceries. As soon as they enrolled Kelly in daycare, she would immediately find any job. The door swung open, and her somber father walked into the room. His shirt was crookly bitten, his pants with stretched out knees hung loosely, 
and he wore old slippers with worn out soles. How long are you staying with us? He asked. I don't know, Dad. You got married, didn't you? So why are you here? It just happened, Dad. It's a long story. I need to clean up. I'll feed Kelly soon. The next morning, her mother clattered dishes in the kitchen for a long time. And then she called Toddy Anna for breakfast. So, Toddy Anna, she began. You can only stay here for a month. Are you going to work? Toddy Anna froze on her chair. What about Kelly? Where can I leave her? With Kelly, Sarah will babysit. Remember Sarah from the neighboring house. And you'll go to the post office. They're looking for an employee. I inquired today. They're expecting you in a month. Toddy Anna felt uneasy. How could she leave such a small baby with a stranger? What if Sarah dropped Kelly or didn't comfort her when she cried? She would be stressed all day at work. You'll be delivering newspapers and letters. I can't take care of the little one. I have to work, and my health is not the best. Besides, you won't trust me with her, her mother exclaimed, suddenly sounding hurt. Toddy Anna lowered her gaze. She didn't want to lie, but her mother had already figured it all out. She slammed her hand on the table and, hunching over, left the kitchen. A month flew by imperceptibly. Toddy Anna adapted, and she no longer worried so much about Kelly. And when the little one smiled at her mother for the first time, Toddy Anna melted, laughed with joy, and spun the baby around, holding her clothes. Walking with her daughter through the city, Toddy Anna didn't even venture into the street where Justin lived. And although her mother said that Justin had reportedly gone somewhere, she still tried to avoid that neighborhood just in case. She knew it was foolish. It's not like they couldn't accidentally run into each other on the street. But she was still afraid and didn't want to discuss her unhappy family life with him. As much as Tatiana hoped, her parents didn't reduce their drinking. But at least they stopped hosting loud gatherings. Her mother started cleaning the room in the hallway and once she even brought a ladder and painted the kitchen ceiling. It didn't add much comfort, but at least there was less dust in the air. Neither grandmother nor grandfather approached their granddaughter, and they hardly interacted with Tatiana. Tatiana visited Sarah, the future babysitter, several times. She was a neat elderly woman who had worked her entire life in an orphanage, raised three children, and had seven grandchildren, but she still had strength. Despite her 70 years, she deftly managed household chores, and her health was holding up. Tatiana laid her daughter on the high, neatly made bed, covered with a patchwork quilt. A stack of pillows proudly stood at the headboard. The room was warm and clean, and Tatiana let out a barely audible sigh, wishing their home could be like this. Meanwhile, Sarah rubbed her hands together and began to caress Kelly from head to toe as the baby playfully kicked her legs and made gentle sounds, blowing bubbles. She wasn't crying. It seemed like she was attentively examining the elderly woman who leaned over her. Don't worry, Sarah said. Everything will be fine. The day came when Tatiana had to go to work. She woke up early. It was still dark outside. She felt uneasy. Kelly was sleeping in the stroller. Tatiana sat beside her for a long time. Convincing herself that there was no other option, Sarah would handle it, and she would come back during the day, maybe even feed the baby herself. Even if it was just a little milk, it was beneficial, the pediatrician said. However, the reassurances didn't work. What if the baby got scared without her, got used to a lack of maternal warmth and affection, and thought she had been abandoned? She managed to pull herself together and started getting ready, fed Kelly had her breakfast, and went out. The cold eagerly nipped at her cheeks and nose, pricking and stinging with icy needles. Toddy Anna pulled her scarf higher and strode on the crunching snow. She had already moved some of her things to Sarah's the day before, so she traveled light. It was still dark outside, with only a few yellow house lights scattered here and there. Both of Sarah's windows were illuminated. Go on. She gruffly assured Tatiana, who clung to the child with numb hands. Pop in during the day, and you can have some hot soup. She nearly forced Tatiana out of the door. 
Tati and I wiped her damp eyes and stood still on the stairs. She listened intently, thinking that Kelly would start crying any moment, looking for her mother, and realizing that she'd been abandoned. She awkwardly shuffled near the door, ready to dash back to her daughter at the first sign, but it remained quiet inside. Only the sound of clanking dishes could be heard and Sarah's gentle voice singing children's songs. After standing there for about 10 minutes, Toddy Anna quickly ran down the stairs before she could change her mind. There were many letters and newspapers. For entire days, Toddy Anna walked around the city, tridging through snowdrifts, shooing away dogs that approached the picket fences in the private sector, barking at her playfully. She listened to the news that lonely elderly women were eager to share with her. She saw the joyful eyes when she delivered letters. She averted her gaze from those waiting for news and thought about Kelly all the time. In the evenings, she rushed to her with all her might, gasping, slipping on the compacted snow, hurriedly shook her boots, and turned the doorknob. Your mommy is here, Sarah would sing, turning Kelly towards her. Tatiana would take Kelly. Kissing her little head, cheeks, fingers, twirling her around, cooing, capturing her first smile and tender, uncertain babbling. Sarah smiled. A month passed. Toddy Anna got used to her job and was very happy that she no longer had to fear being left without money. She lived modestly and hardly bought anything for herself. But Sarah would sometimes buy sweets from her salary, and the elderly lady was very happy. Toddy Anna would pick up her daughter and head home. She would be met with a sour but sober mother. Her father was in the hospital again. The doctors had warned that this time it was serious. Her mother cried for a long time but stopped drinking for the time being. Toddy Anna also visited the hospital. One day, while delivering mail, Toddy Anna came across an envelope that was addressed to her but the handwriting was completely different from that of her old dormitory friends, with whom she rarely corresponded. She would write to them occasionally, boasting about Kelly's progress and sharing a bit about herself without asking about Darren. In the first few months, while sorting her mail, she waited for a letter from him, always hoping he would come to his senses. It hurt her heart and soul to look at Kelly. Even if he had just inquired about their daughter, she might have forgiven him. And now, when she had completely stopped expecting anything, Derek had condescended to send a message. Toddy Anna turned the envelope in her fingers with trepidation. She pulled out the piece of paper with trembling hands and skimmed the lines dryly, as if reading an official report. Derek wrote that he understood how difficult it was for her and that, as a responsible has been, he was ready to take her back. Mir Anna was also agreeable to her return. He asked her to respond with the date when she could arrive so that he could meet them at the station and try everything again. Toddy Anna reread the concise line several times. In the first few seconds, she was overwhelmed with joy. Toddy Anna rushed to the stroller and showed Kelly, who was sleeping peacefully, her little arms outstretched. Look, sweetheart, daddy is calling you to him, she whispered. With eager eyes, she walked around the room, thinking about how to quit her job and whether they would let her go. And suddenly, she froze in place, sitting down at the table, lost in thought, and then began to read the even lines again. Slightly furrowing her brows, she intently moved her lips, as if reading syllable by syllable. There was a chilling coldness and indifference emanating from the paper as if it weren't a person who had written it, but a soulless robot. And the issue wasn't that Derek condescended to forgive her imagined infidelity, but the fact that there was no mention of Kelly, as if Toddy Anna was supposed to return with a suitcase and not with a living child in her arms. She helplessly stared at the bluing. What should she do? What if Derek refuses to acknowledge her and starts scolding her? or even makes her give up Kelly to an orphanage when the time comes for school. And Miranda, what about her? She won't let her get away with anything. Offering a piece of bread. Will she be living under their complete control again, asking for permission for everything? Begging and buying toys for Kelly with reservations and feeling guilty for not doing enough. Derek doesn't mention any of this. But for some reason, her soul protested. 
not believing him, as if there was a warning hidden between the lines. Tani Anna decisively crumpled the sheet of paper, went to the kitchen, and threw it in the trash. The beloved woman's holiday, International Women's Day, was approaching March 8. Tati Anna came home from work barely alive. There were many letters and cards, and everyone hurried to congratulate each other on the holiday. Sarah brought Kelly to Tati Anna herself. Tati Anna took off her dirty rubber boots and we really stretched out her legs. It was fine. Soon the barrage of congratulations would subside, and she wouldn't have to worry about it until May Day. Kelly reached out to her mother, smiling, blowing bubbles. Her green eyes shone with joy. Well, darling, happy International Women's Day to you, Tatiana said tenderly, extending a new frog-shaped rattle to her. For Sarah, she had bought a beautiful flowery scarf. And for her mother, a new kitchen towel with a tulip pattern and a delicate flower. When Tatiana handed her mother the gift, she flinched and stared at her daughter in bewilderment. What's this? She asked somewhat gruffly. Happy holiday, Mom, for International Women's Day, Tatiana said with a smile. Thank you, daughter, she whispered, hugging the towel and the fragrant yellow wig close. Tatiana looked at her in astonishment. Her mother had never thanked her before. She only ever scolded and reprimanded. And now, she shrugged awkwardly, lowered her head, and left. The next day, Tatiana took a walk with the stroller. She decided to go to the park where she had enjoyed walking since childhood, often alone, and later with her faithful friend, Justin. Soon the apple trees there would bloom, adorned with white veils on their crowns, generously scattering fragrant petals all around. Toddy Anna was eagerly looking forward to that day. She would definitely show the flowers to Kelly, and the baby would open her eyes in surprise and then burst into laughter, reaching for the branches. The sun pleasantly warmed her face, making her squint and wrinkle her nose, and freckles playfully scattered across her cheeks. Everything was good and calm. Toddy Ann unbuttoned her coat, unwound her scarf, checked if Kelly wasn't too hot, and settled on a bench under her favorite apple tree. A gust of wind rushed in, and the tree immediately swayed its branches, on which the first sticky leaves had just begun to appear. Basking in the sun, Toddy Anna suddenly remembered that dreadful winter day when she had been thrown outside in the cold. Her heart didn't tremble then, neither for Mir and nor Derek. Yesterday, she had thrown away another letter from her husband and a greeting card. Derek had suddenly started writing more often, even though she had explained from the very beginning that she was unlikely to return to him. It had been hard, especially because of Kelly but her stubborn heart insisted that this would be better for everyone. Tatiana, she suddenly heard from behind. Tatiana, is that you? She turned around. Justin was standing in front of her, tall, gray-eyed, in an open jacket, looking very grown up. It was as if she had seen her classmate just last spring, but now there was a mature and serious young man before her. Justin, Tatiana exclaimed, jumping up from the bench. Her hand rested on the stroller's handle and mechanically rocked it. Justin approached and peered inside. Son, he whispered. Tatiana shook her head. No, daughter Kelly. Justin straightened up and looked at Tatiana with surprise and joy. Uh-uh, you finally listened to me, he said contentedly and looked into the stroller once more. She looks a lot like you. Tatiana smiled. She had been so afraid of running into Justin but he acted so calmly and naturally, as if there was nothing unusual about meeting her in the park. Without saying a word, they both sat down. Are you going to your parents to visit? Justin asked, and his serious eyes softened. Tatiana lowered her head, sighed, and shooed away a persistent pigeon that was circling around her feet. No, Justin, I live here, work at the post office. Our neighbor watches over Kelly. That's how it is, she shrugged. Justin looked attentively and seriously. There was no hint of curiosity or mockery in his eyes. All right, he said. I won't press you. If you want to, you can tell me yourself. Toddy Anna gratefully smiled. She really didn't want to confess right now. It was good that Justin understood that. And you, I heard you were leaving. 
Yes, for work. I returned two days ago, just in reply. Kelly fidgeted in her stroller. Toddy Anna pushed back the blanket and picked up the baby. The little one stared at the unfamiliar man with wide eyes, carefully examining him. Justin smiled and gently touched her tiny clenched fingers. It's time for us to go, Toddy Anna said. We need to feed the baby. I'll walk you. Are you going home? Yes. Then let's go. Justin took hold of the stroller's handle. Toddy Anna looked at him in surprise and gently placed her daughter inside. Justin slowly started down the path that hadn't completely dried yet. Passersby hurriedly glanced at the young, attractive couple walking with their baby, assuming they were husband and wife. At the end of the street, Taishi and his home appeared. Justin looked concerned at the two-story building, recalling how he used to chase boys who made fun of Toddy Anna in the yard, mocking her shabby coat and her alcoholic parents. Toddy Anna, he began, hesitantly. How are your parents? Especially now that you're back with a child. Don't worry, Justin. They drink less now. Toddy Anna replied. My father is often in the hospital, and my mother is sober when he's not around. Did they react positively when they saw their granddaughter? Justin nodded towards the stroller. Not particularly, but my mother recently asked for permission to hold Kelly and even read her some poems. Well, I must go now. Thank you for walking me. I was so happy to see you again. Goodbye. Tatiana rolled the stroller to the ground floor and quickly clattered up the stairs, fearing that Justin might follow her. He, on the other hand, stood outside with his hands in his pockets, pondering why Tatiana never wrote or informed him about her return. What had happened to her? From that day on, Justin seemed to be constantly around. He'd meet her after work, help her carry her back, stop by in the evenings with Taishi and his favorite pastries, and join her and Kelly for weekend outings in the park. Finally, Toddy Anna couldn't take it anymore and decided to talk to him. You see, just then, Toddy Anna began. My husband and mother-in-law kicked me out because of our correspondence. What? Justin raised his eyebrows in indignation. Toddy Anna made a hand gesture, asking him to hear her out. Yes. My mother-in-law found our letters and told all sorts of things to my husband while I was in the maternity ward. He believed her, didn't even want to listen to me. He, Tatiana paused. He thought the baby wasn't his. His mother convinced him of that with some nasty gossip she came up with, saying that I ran to you while staying in a hotel. She noticed Justin tightly pressing his lips together, and his cheeks started to flush, but he remained silent interlocking his fingers more strongly. How could he believe something like that, Tatiana? Justin asked softly. I don't know. No, he's writing and calling, wanting me back. But for some reason, I can't trust him. It all feels strange. He hasn't come here for me, and there's something off in his letters. What are you planning to do next? Justin asked cautiously. Are you going back to him? Tatiana let out a heavy sigh. Tears welled up in her eyes. No, just then. It's unlikely. I wanted to, for Kelly's sake, but I can't. Whenever I remember that dreadful winter, their eyes, their angry faces, it chokes me. Can such a thing be forgiven? That's right, Justin suddenly exclaimed passionately. Two red spots appeared on his cheeks. Tatiana, you're amazing. You're beautiful, smart, and your daughter is wonderful. Everything will be fine for you. I'll help you. I'll be there for you. And I'll help raise Kelly. He rushed to say. No, Justin. No. Tatiana shook her head in fear. Why not? Justin asked with pain in his voice, almost groaning. Am I worse than Derek? You're the best, Justin. You're the very best. I'm so grateful to you for everything you're doing for us. But, but do you still love him? Justin asked wearily. Tatiana lowered her eyes. She didn't know if she loved him or not. It was all so complex in life. Justin interpreted her silence in his own way, deflated, dropped his shoulders, and turned away. Tatiana remained silent as well. She couldn't tell him that she didn't see him merely as a friend anymore. She couldn't ruin his life and deprive him of the meeting with the one destined for him. She wanted him to find his own happiness 
get married, have children. Toddy Anna believed he wouldn't fit into her life anymore. However, the very next day, Justin met her after work and handed over a set of molds for Kelly's play. It's a bit early for her, Justin. Toddy Anna laughed. Don't worry, time flies, and these were brought for me by a friend from Poland. See how bright and unusual they are. She'll start playing with them when the time is right. And then in the sandbox, Justin continued. Toddy Anna took the toys and quickly squeezed his hand with her fingers. Thank you, Justin. She was about to run over to Sarah when Justin caught her by the elbow. Toddy Anna, come visit us. My mom really wants to see Kelly and you. My dad also misses your conversations. Toddy Anna awkwardly chuckled. It feels a bit uncomfortable. Please come. My parents will be delighted, Justin urged. Catherine and Patrick greeted Toddy Anna as always. Justin's mom fawned over little Kelly, and his dad smiled while searching for children's books in the cupboard, the ones he had once read to his son. Oh no, I won't take those, Toddy Anna blushed. You'll need them when you have grandchildren. I don't think we'll ever get any from him, Patrick grumbled. Catherine sadly nodded, agreeing with her husband. While they were busy in the kitchen, Toddy Anna gathered the courage to ask. Catherine, Justin wrote to me that he met a nice girl. Where is she? The woman sighed and, shifting cups around, answered quietly. It didn't work out for them, Toddy Anna. She's a good girl, but Justin didn't want to deceive her. He told her he couldn't love her. She cried and asked me for advice. What could I do when he... Catherine cut herself off mid-sentence and rushed to the stove to turn off the boiling kettle. Then she busied herself looking for strawberry jam in the cupboard. Tatiana watched her closely and then approached her, gently touching her shoulder. You didn't finish your sentence. Tatiana, he's been in love with you since school and he can't forget you. Catherine replied without turning around. That's why he broke up with that girl, threw himself into work, and left for a few months. When he met you in the park, he came home so happy that I didn't know what to think. What do you think, Tatiana? Catherine looked stern, her eyes filled with concern for her son. What mother doesn't want happiness for their child? Tatiana didn't respond and simply took the cups, carrying them into the room. As she entered, she stopped. Justin was standing by the window, holding Kelly in his arms, tenderly explaining to her about the trees growing in the garden and the birds hopping on the branches. Kelly listened attentively, as if understanding something. Toddy Anna smiled as she watched them, recalling Catherine's words. Toddy Anna, you don't have to think that you owe me anything, Justin would say in the evenings while standing outside her building. Just allow me to help you and Kelly and I want nothing more. But just then, Toddy Ann exclaimed with a tinge of sadness, I can't ruin your life. There are plenty of single, beautiful girls out there. Choose any of them. I don't want just any, Justin softly replied. I need you, along with Kelly. He turned around and walked towards the bus stop. Toddy Anna watched him go. She felt bad for being so cruel, but she couldn't see any other way. Two more weeks passed. Justin continued to come, waiting, helping. Yours is here, his mother would say, looking out the window and spotting Justin's figure in the alley. Toddy Anna would bristle. Mom, how is he mine? What are you making up? She quickly checked herself in the mirror, fixing her disheveled hair, and her eyes sparkled with joy. She realized she was married, that Derek was somewhere far away, but it felt warm in her heart when she saw Justin. They could discuss a lot, talk about their future plans. Justin strongly advised her to get back to college and continue her education. At the moment, Toddy Anna couldn't fathom how that was possible. In the evenings, after putting Kelly to bed, she would gaze out the window thoughtfully. How much their lives had changed. Her father still got sick frequently but drank less. His body couldn't tolerate it anymore. Her mother was now sober as well. Kelly recognized her grandmother, smiled like a little son, and reached for her face. At first, the grandmother hesitated, but as the child grew older, she yearned to talk to her and give her affection. Toddy Ann also began to trust her mother, 
leaving her daughter with her briefly while she ran to the store or hung up laundry. One day, she returned and quietly approached the door, listening. Her mother was singing a song to Kelly. Tatiana froze. Her mother's voice was so tender, so kind, it squeezed Tatiana's heart. Throughout her childhood, young Tatiana had yearned for her mother to speak to her in that gentle voice, but all she heard was scolding. Tears welled up in her eyes, but Toddy Anna was happy her daughter would never experience anything like that. She was loved, and no one would ever harm her with words or actions. Only one thing soured her mood, the letters from Derek. Toddy Anna had finally realized that he wanted her back for some reason. She felt he wasn't sincere, and she was afraid of him. How could she trust someone who had kicked his wife and newborn daughter out into the cold? Most likely, Mir Anna had come up with something again, which was why Derek kept writing regularly. Toddy Anna had already made up her mind. Once Kelly turned a year old, she would file for divorce. She wouldn't seek child support Derek could disappear from their lives, just like love and trust had vanished between them. She didn't need anyone else. She had Kelly, and that was enough for her to nurture and rejoice in her achievements. After work, no matter how tired Toddy Anna was, she would pick up Kelly from Sarah's and head out for a walk. Often, Justin accompanied her. Here, my mom sent these. He would awkwardly hand her another bag with a set of toys. Please, tell her a big thank you. Toddy Anna genuinely responded. You should tell her yourself. Come over for a visit on the weekend. Toddy Anna did visit, and once again, Catherine served her tea and delicious pie while Patrick animatedly read children's poems to Kelly. It was warm and cozy. Misfortune crept in unnoticed. That day, Toddy Anna had been running around with a bag filled with newspapers and letters. By lunchtime, she was near her home and wanted to visit Kelly, but she spotted a car next to their barracks. As she approached, she saw paramedics loading her father onto a stretcher. His pallid face contorted with pain, and her pale mother was wringing her hands. Tatiana, her mother rushed to her. Oh, your father is in terrible condition. The doctor says they might not make it. Go with him, Tatiana. At least he might survive. She cried, her tears smidging her face. Tatiana, shocked, looked back and forth between her mother and her father, who had rolled his eyes. But, Mom, what about Kelly? I'll get her from Sarah. Don't worry. I can't go. My heart is about to jump out of my chest. And there's no use to them if I go only tears. Toddy Anna, I'm begging you. Toddy Anna hesitated as she looked at her mother. She had left Kelly in her care for brief periods before. But this time, she would be far away and return late. The post office will understand and let you go. I'll tell my boss, and if necessary, Sarah can help with Kelly. Her mother continued persuading her. From the car came a muffled groan from her father. So, who's going? Who will go with us? Asked the stern doctor in a white coat. His daughter will go, her mother said, Toddy in a sigh. She felt sorry for her father, and Kelly was left behind. What should she do? There was no time for contemplation. Toddy Anna handed her mother the bag with correspondence and got into the car. It's okay, she reassured herself. My mother has taken care of Kelly before, and Sarah is nearby. Turning on the siren, the ambulance rushed through the streets toward the city's exit. Toddy Anna didn't return home until morning. She missed the last bus and had to spend the night at the bus station. Her whole body ached from the sleepless night. Her father had been admitted to the therapy department, and a full examination was needed to make a diagnosis. But from the brief conversations among the doctors that Toddy Anna overheard, it became clear that his condition was grim. She was scared, and she prayed to an unknown higher power for her father's recovery. Despite never witnessing anything good from him, she didn't wish him harm. He had given her life, and now she had to help him. Fatigued from the long journey, Toddy Anna approached her home. She passed by Sarah's windows and considered stopping by. Her mother should have already taken Kelly, and she had to go to work in the morning. However, she decided to go to her place first freshen up, change her clothes, 
and leave a note for her mother that everything was okay. It wasn't her concern yet. She would be going to her father in a few days, and by then, she'd have a clearer picture of the situation. I'll still have time to drop by for Kelly. Tatiana thought with a smile, feeling warm filling her heart. She quickly climbed the stairs to the second floor, and her apartment's door was slightly ajar. Tatiana froed her brow. What's this? In the past, when drinking parties were a regular occurrence here, an unlocked door was normal. However, recently, the door had always been locked. With things, a small child, there shouldn't be an open passage. Tatiana cautiously entered, and a sour smell of alcohol hit her nose. Her head even spun, and she felt like she had been transported back in time. Any moment now, her father would emerge from a room unsteady, and her disheveled, red-cheeked mother would laugh behind him. However, she found no one. Venturing further inside, Toddy and I noticed that Kelly's belongings were scattered across the bed, as if someone had been searching for something. She proceeded to her parents' room, and there she froze, gripping the door frame with both hands. Lying across the bed was her mother, snoring loudly. There was no doubt she was drunk. Toddy Anna was horrified as she skinned the room. An unfinished bottle of vodka and two empty glasses sat on the table. What's going on? Where's Kelly? A dreadful thought pierced her mind. Toddy Anna groaned and rushed to her mother. Mom, Mom, wake up. Where's Kelly? But her mother only groaned and mumbled something, waving her hand to shoo Toddy Anna away as if she were an annoying fly. Maybe she's at Sarah's. Maybe she stayed there since yesterday, and mother started drinking when they took dad to the hospital. There were so many questions. But why are there two glasses on the table? Was someone drinking with her? Was someone searching through my daughter's things? Was it a drinking body looking for money? Toddy Anna dashed upstairs, partially opened the wardrobe, Checked under the towel the money was neatly stacked in its place. She rushed downstairs and ran to Sarah's home. She burst into the house without knocking, still wearing her shoes, rushed into the room nobody was there. Maybe they went for a walk. No, it's still too early. Oh God, where is my little girl? Tatiana lamented, pacing back and forth, not realizing that Uncle Jesse had burst out of the kitchen and was shouting something at her. She didn't hear a thing. Sarah, emerging from the kitchen, asked Tatiana, What are you doing here? Where's Kelly? Did you decide to leave her with your mother today? Tatiana turned around, and Sarah stepped back. The girl's face was paler than ever, her dry lips moved silently, and tears streamed down her cheeks unceasingly. I don't know where she is. Tatiana sobbed and grabbed her head. I came back, and the door was open, but Kelly wasn't there. My mother is drunk and can't explain anything. Hold on, hold on, the old lady hurriedly said. Yesterday, she took Kelly, and she was sober. Would I ever let her take the child if I suspected someone was drinking? Toddy Anna was once again pacing the room. Overwhelmed with the fear that she might never see her daughter again, her vision began to blur. All right, Toddy Anna, Sarah said in a stern voice. Calm down, pull yourself together. This is not the time for tears. We need to find the child. Let's go see your mother. Five minutes later, both of them stood in the room, watching as Tashi and his mother struggled to get up from the bed. Finally, she sat down and swayed, hugging herself. Mom, Tatiana rushed to her. Mom, where's Kelly? Her mother gazed around the room with a cloudy look, then looked at her daughter. Her eyes were red and inflamed. She furrowed her brow rubbed her face with her hands, and looked around in bewilderment. Remember who came, Sarah said in a loud voice, clinking an empty glass on the table. Who were you with yesterday? To my eyes, I wouldn't have let you. Toddy Anna pressed her hands to her mouth, trembling violently. She could imagine her little, defenseless Kelly in the clutches of some wicked woman who had kidnapped her. The child must be crying, searching for her mother needing warm arms, and wanting to eat. Oh God, what if someone had hurt her? Toddy Anna moaned. Her mother raised her disheveled head, looking confused. Derek visited, wanted to see his daughter. He brought a bottle as a gift. I didn't want to, I was with Kelly, but he convinced me to have a drink. 
she said, hanging her head. And then, what happened next? Where is Kelly? Sarah and Tatiana almost exclaimed in unison. Her mother fell silent, trying to remember something. She remembered the surprise of seeing a tall, curly-haired man at the door. He had told her he came for Tatiana and her daughter and kept pouring vodka into her glass. After that, everything seemed to fade away. We need to go to the police, Tatiana, Sarah suddenly said decisively. There's no point in talking to her. She nodded in the direction of her mother. Why would Derek do this? Are we sure it was him? What were they planning? Toddy Anna wondered in despair. There was no time to waste. They had to go to the police. They rushed out onto the street. Toddy Anna felt like she was trapped in a nightmare where you had to run from a monster, but your legs wouldn't listen and every movement felt sluggish, as if she were pushing through a sticky web. Toddy Anna, she heard a man's voice. Toddy Anna quickly turned around and saw Justin approaching her home with something wrapped in his hands. Hello, he said with a smile but faltered upon seeing Tatiana's face. What? What happened? Tatiana's legs felt weak and her head was spinning. She wiped away tears and couldn't say a word. What's going on? Father, Justin said in confusion. Kelly is missing. Sarah's voice trembled. Derek took the child. Justin nervously shifted his gaze between Sarah and Tatiana. We're going to the police, Tatiana whispered with pale lips. Justin hesitated for a moment. Wait, Tatiana. Derek took Kelly. Are you sure? My mother said so. He got her drunk. Oh God, Justin, we need to hurry. Tatiana staggered and Justin immediately took her by the arm. No, he said firmly. We need to get to the train station and catch up to them. He probably left in the evening, and we, we can catch the morning train. I'll get a taxi now. Wait here. Justin rushed to a nearby street. Right, Tatiana. He's absolutely right. Sarah hurriedly added. If he took her anywhere, it's probably to his place to lure you. Go quickly. Go. An hour later, Tatiana was sitting in the crowded train carriage. The train was full and she had the most uncomfortable seat, but she didn't care. She felt as though she had turned to stone, with all her thoughts focused on Kelly. Her heart was torn apart by pain, as if it had been ripped from her chest and was being trampled by iron boots, all the while groaning and pounding with agony. There were no more tears. Tatiana, Justin touched her hand gently. We will find her, I promise. He embraced her by the shoulders and held her close. The train seemed to be moving too slowly, and it felt like Kelly was fading into oblivion, threatening to disappear forever. Toddy Anna didn't close her eyes for a moment that night, despite Justin's attempts to persuade her to get some rest. Finally, the train station appeared. Jumping into the first available taxi, Toddy Anna, out of breath, gave Derek's address. As the car drove through the city streets, she stared out of the window, hoping to catch a glimpse of Derek and Kelly. And here was the home they had been evicted from six months ago. Tatiana shrugged her shoulders, recalling the horror that had consumed her when she walked out onto the street with the stroller and trudged through deep snowdrifts. The wheels got stuck, and it was very difficult and frightening. It wasn't the fear for herself, but for her child. And now, when everything seemed to be getting back on track, she was scared again, and once more, it was related to Derek and Mirana. What had she done to deserve such terrible treatment from them? Then another disturbing thought struck her. What if Kelly isn't here? What if they rushed here on a wild goose chase and wasted precious time? But there was no time for contemplation. Toddy Anna hurried to the entrance. Stopping in front of the apartment door, Toddy Anna pressed the doorbell. Justin watched the scene with tension, ready to intervene if necessary. However, he hoped for a peaceful resolution, above all to get Kelly back. The door swung open, and Tatiana saw Derek, who stood there with a smug smile. When he realized that Tatiana wasn't alone, his expression turned sour. Where's Kelly? Tatiana almost shouted and pushed her husband aside as she rushed into the apartment. Derek was taken aback. 
He didn't expect this kind of confrontation and tried to offer some resistance. But Toddy Anna paid no attention. Meanwhile, Justin silently grabbed Derek's arm to keep him in place. Derek made an attempt to break free, but Justin fixed him with such a stern look that he had no choice but to relent. Toddy Annie opened the door to the room where she used to live with Derek. Mir Anna was sitting on the couch, and next to her, Kelly was peacefully asleep. The blanket had slid down a bit, revealing her little leg. Toddy Anna gasped and brought both hands to her mouth. Without taking her eyes off her daughter, she approached. Mir Anna watched her daughter-in-law with a frown. Toddy Anna lowered herself to her knees and pressed her head against Kelly's tiny body. She kissed her hands and breathed in her scent, unable to get enough. There was no force in the world that could take Kelly away from her now. Toddy Anna, Mir Anna suddenly broke the silence. We didn't mean any harm. We just wanted to find a way to get you back here. Toddy Anna lifted her head and gave her a piercing look that made her mother-in-law flinch for the first time in her life. Red blotches appeared on Rana's face, and she even stepped back a few paces. Toddy Anna began carefully wrapping Kelly in a blanket. She wouldn't stay here a moment longer. Her hands trembled from anxiety, and harsh words were on the verge of escaping her lips. But Toddy Anna silently gathered her child. Kelly wrinkled her nose but didn't wake up. Carrying her, Toddy Anna headed for the door. Toddy Anna, please listen. Her mother-in-law blocked the exit with her whole body. Toddy Anna, stop. Understand, Toddy Anna. Derek and I made a mistake. Toddy Anna stared at her mother-in-law in amazement and then bitterly smiled. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, we were wrong. I'm sorry. Tashi Anna's response was laced with sarcasm as she made her way out with her child. Toddy Anna couldn't believe her ears. They had thrown her out onto the streets without any regard for her, even with a newborn baby. And now, they were calling it a mistake. Apologizing. Just like that. Mir Anna seemed completely oblivious to Tashi Anna's disbelief. She continued her speech. You are officially married. He's your husband. You're his wife and you should live together. Derek tried to contact you, but you, you seem to be holding a grudge against us and decided to use the child. How else can we explain your unwillingness to communicate? We have the right to see our daughter and granddaughter. Of course, you chose an entirely unsuitable name, but it's too late now. In any case, stop this, put the child down and listen to Derek, mere in order. Tatiana smirked and attempted to push past her to leave. Tatiana, her mother-in-law shouted. Derek's been up for a promotion. They were supposed to give him a two-bedroom apartment, and because of your antics, he might lose everything. The child needs a father. You have no right. Tatiana didn't bother to listen any for there. If she hadn't been so exhausted from searching for Kelly, she might have burst into laughter. What a ridiculous reason to go through all of this. All because of an apartment. So that's why Derek's letters felt so insincere. He just wanted a separate place to live and didn't care about Kelly and their daughter. They were both such hypocrites. Where are you going to go now? Mirana persisted. Back to that dump with the alcoholics. I'd rather stay in a dump than return to those monsters. Tatiana shouted cutting off her mother-in-law mid-sentence. Pushing past her, Toddy Anna rushed out into the corridor. Justin was still waiting on the landing. He smiled broadly and with relief when he saw Toddy Anna exit with her daughter. Derek, on the other hand, scowled darkly from under his furrowed brows. So, you really did have a lover, he said to Toddy Anna as she walked by. You didn't hesitate to bring him into the house. Derek spat on the ground, and Justin clenched his lips and took a step forward. Don't, Tatiana wearily stopped him. Let's get out of here. I don't want to see them anymore. She held Kelly even closer and began descending the stairs. At home, Tatiana was met by her sober, tearful mother. Seeing her daughter with her granddaughter in her arms, she slumped onto the bench in the corridor, shaking with sobs, lamenting, Oh, Tatiana, Tatiana. You'll never forgive me. I've ruined your whole life. She swayed back and forth, 
her gray hair falling onto her face, looking so pitiful and miserable that it broke Tashiana's heart. Don't cry, Mom, calm down. Everything is fine. Kelly is with me. The summer passed, and they celebrated Kelly's first birthday with a small gathering. Tashiana's father passed away at the beginning of autumn, and her mother took a long time to recover. The granddaughter brought solace, and every time she saw her grandmother, she smiled broadly, revealing her two pearly bottom teeth. Tatiana was amazed. It turned out her mother had so much tenderness and love within her, and she had never known. Her mother didn't even look at alcohol. After the incident when Kelly disappeared because of her, she spent the month in a clinic. Whatever they did to her there, she never mentioned vodka again. Her life now revolved around her granddaughter. Tatiana smiled as she watched her mother dote on Kelly. The little girl, raising her eyebrows in surprise, listened so attentively as if she understood everything. Justin was always there, helping with renovations, and their rooms finally started to look clean and cozy. The fluffy white snow whirled outside. Kelly, in her smart red dress, took her first steps, clumsily plopped down on the floor, and giggled heartily. She was always laughing, and everyone else joined in. Sari affectionately potted the girl's head, and on the bed lay her gift little socks. Debbie sent a package with tiny, soft mittens, a hat, and a scarf. The girls added some candies and a few children's books. Catherine and Patrick came, bearing the largest plush teddy bear. Justin had been delayed somewhere, and Toddy Anna was busy in the kitchen, preparing a cake. The combed and even slightly plump mother was making salads and pouring juice into a pitcher. A knock at the door was followed by laughter and cheerful shouts. Finally, Justin arrived, laden with bindles and bags, carrying a small Christmas tree tied with a string in his hands. Here, he proudly announced, we'll decorate it soon. Right, Kelly? The little girl smiled broadly and headed over to Justin. It was loud and joyful. When the guests, along with the birthday girl, moved to the room, Justin awkwardly grabbed Tatiana's hand. He took off his warm jacket, and Tatiana saw that underneath it, he had hidden a bouquet of three white roses. How beautiful, Tatiana exclaimed. Happy birthday to your daughter, Justin said quietly. They froze, afraid to look at each other. Toddy Anna held the flowers to her chest, her palm stinging from a thorn, but she paid it no mind. Justin traced his fingers along her cheek and leaned in slightly. The kiss was light and tender, feeling like a butterfly's touch. Toddy Anna and Justin laughed without speaking and, holding hands, entered the room where cheerful voices and well wishes filled the air. After Christmas, Toddy Anna took a leave from work and went to see Derek because they needed to get a divorce. She couldn't leave Kelly behind for long, so she took her with her. It made her feel safer. Justin didn't let them go alone. No matter how brave Tatiana claimed to be, he wouldn't let her deal with it on her own. Where will you leave Kelly over there? He grumbled and froed his brows. Kelly smiled and reached for him. She was accustomed to Justin being there when her mom was around. When they arrived at the destination, Justin wanted to accompany Toddy Anna to Derek's place, but she persuaded him against it. You better take Kelly for a walk, she said with a sly smile. The weather is lovely. With a sense of nervousness, Toddy Anna rang the doorbell once again, behind which lived the people who had caused her so much pain. She didn't want to see them, but she needed to go to court with Derek to file for divorce. She was worried about how he would behave. Derek didn't open the door immediately, and he looked tired and disheveled. Toddy Ann also caught the all-too-familiar smell of alcohol on him. Derek didn't recognize her at first, and for a moment, he stared at the young, rosy, beautiful woman in a fluffy fur hat. Toddy Anna. He murmured in amazement. Yes, Derek. It's me. Can I come in? Derek mumbled something to himself, but opened the door wider. Toddy Anna cautiously entered. The apartment was quiet and smelled of stale dirt, medications, and illness. Tatiana shivered. Let's go to the kitchen. He nodded and shuffled ahead. Tatiana looked around in confusion. Mir and I had always kept the place clean, but now the apartment was in disrepair. Where's Mirana? 
Tatiana couldn't help but ask. Derek settled heavily on a stool and, with a familiar motion, pushed a bottle of brandy towards himself. Do you want some? He smirked, looking at Tatiana. She silently shook her head and suddenly heard a weak, moaning voice coming from deep within the apartment. What's that? Tatiana whispered through her lips. That's my mother. She's sick. He lowered his head. Tatiana looked along. It's all because of you. Derek suddenly hissed. You brought misery to us. First, you cheated on me. Then you gave birth to our child. And then you poisoned my mother's mind with such nonsense that she fell. Tatiana wanted to object. But she thought it would be pointless to explain anything to a drunken man like Derek. He wouldn't believe her anyway. So, what could she do now? She hadn't come here for this. It seemed they wouldn't be able to go to court today, and they'd have to try again tomorrow. Derek got back to his bottle, and Tatiana stepped into the hallway and slowly made her way to the door. Once again, she heard the moaning. Yielding to an inexplicable impulse, she turned around and walked towards Miranda. Slightly cracking the door open, she recoiled. In the stuffy, medicine-scented room filled with the scent of human bodies, a withered figure lay on the bed. Bony, yellowed hands emerged from beneath the covers, and sunken dark eyes gleamed. Both women remained silent, and only the wheezing sound of labored breathing filled the silence. Finally, a weak voice spoke up. Tatiana, is that you? Yes, Miranda, it's me, Tatiana replied. Tatiana took a step forward but hesitated awkwardly by the bedside. Miranda stared at her for a long and attentive moment, then moved her fingers. Please, sit down. Don't be afraid. Sit, she gestured. Tatiana quietly took a seat. It was frightening to look at her mother-in-law. Tatiana couldn't help but think, Derek, how can you neglect your mother like this? You see, illness has overcome me, Miranda said. This is my punishment. She fell silent as if gathering her strength. Okay, Tatiana, it's good that you came. It's good. I can lighten my soul before death. Come on, Miranda. Why talk like this? You'll get better. No, dear. No, she gasped, cutting Tatiana off for the first time, addressing her as dear. Forgive me, Tatiana. Don't hold it against me. I've ruined your life, and Derek's too. I said all sorts of things about you, like the devil possessed me, threw you out in the cold. What was I thinking? Long streaks of tears ran down her cheeks. Toddy Anna remained silent, head lowered. She felt deeply sorry for the elderly, sick woman, but her words didn't resonate in her heart. Will you forgive me? The old woman looked at Toddy Anna with pleading eyes. Yes, Mirana, don't worry. I hold no grudge against you. It just worked out this way, Toddy Anna replied. Mirana sobbed, her body shaking with sobs. Toddy Anna realized she couldn't stay there any longer. She got up, touched her mother-in-law's hand, and quickly left. The next morning, Toddy Anna found Derek still sober, surprisingly agreeing to go with her to file the divorce papers. Perhaps the wine store next to the courthouse appealed to him the most in this situation. All the formalities were completed quickly. Derek grimly nodded and was about to head to the store when, at the entrance, he bumped into Justin and Kelly, who had come to get Tatiana. Uncle, Kelly pointed her finger at Derek. Derek grimaced and, slipping on the snow, headed in the direction of the store, where the excited shouts of other enthusiasts could already be heard. Mama, Papa, Kelly babbled, shifting her emerald green eyes between Toddy Anna and Justin. In the spring, Toddy Anna and Justin got married. Toddy Anna had just graduated from college and worked as an agronomist for six months when she learned she was expecting another baby. Justin beamed with happiness, twirling a joyful Kelly around and asking her, Kelly, do you want a little sister or a little brother? A little sister, Kelly shouted, and a little brother. Tatiana smiled softly and nodded her head. And that's exactly what happened. Tatiana gave birth to twins, a boy and a girl. Once again, the extended family gathered around the table, laughing, congratulating the blushing Tatiana, debating the names for the babies. As the eldest, 
Kelly was entrusted with the task. Maria and Philip, she blurted out, placing her hand on the large stroller. Well done, sweetheart, Justin exclaimed, picking Kelly up in his arms. She could hold trustingly against her father, happy that, as always, he was pleased with her. Meanwhile, Toddy Anna rocked the babies in the stroller, marveling at how lucky she had been. 